All right, so now we're going to be covering our texturing part two. Um, we're starting to get into substance and uh, yeah. All right, so the first thing that I will bring up is um, just like tying on to what we did last week. So last week we set up this file, um, we attached textures and we were doing some ba base skin texture um, the eye material um, and stuff like that. Now, you'll notice I've rearranged things a little bit differently, and I've done this for substance. Um, so I mentioned this a, a long time ago with uh, with ZBrush. ZBrush has the same issue, and so does 3D Coat, um, where basically if you import a mesh, it's asymmetrical. Um, it does not know where the origin is, or well, it does know where the origin is. It just sets the origin to be the center of uh, of all your objects. So basically it creates a bounding box around everything um, and makes that the origin, <laughs> which I hate the worst. Um, so what I do is I actually, I export this as a big old plane because she is asymmetrical. Um, and because everything fits within this plane, um, this is the origin of the world. So the origin is on this plane um, and I can define where the center point is. If I didn't have this, uh, the center line would be offset on her face because this arm sticks out further than the other one. Um, you don't really have to worry about the front and back quite as much, uh, unless you're using front and back symmetry, which I'm not. Um, but just for the sake of demonstration, I made it so that the plane actually encompasses everything that's in front and behind as well, um, so that that is perfectly centered. So that's the first thing. Um, and then you have to make sure that you have your proper, appropriate materials assigned to everything, um, because you'll need those to kind of hide and show and texture on different materials in substance. So I have the hair that has the hair material, I have the sword that has the sword material, um, and I have the body that has the body material and the eye that has the eye material, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then we export that as an FBX, um, which you know is very standard stuff, right? So you export selection and then you just say as FBX and you export it to your folder. Um, I usually create a substance folder for my substance stuff. I just exported it as Zoe um, and put it in the folder. Um, and there it is. So that's the first thing. Second thing um, is Photoshop. Uh, so Photoshop in Photoshop, we went in and we created this base color map. Um, all I care about is the skin, really. I, I'm not worried about anything else. And um, you could if you wanted to. Um, so today we're going to be going in Substance, so we're going to create a basically a, a gradient map uh, as our base colors in Substance. Um, I used to, and I still prefer to create gradient maps in Photoshop, but it is a lot less efficient. It takes a lot, lot, lot more time to do. Also, if you uh, create your gradient maps in Photoshop, you don't get the luxury of being able to assign other material properties to those uh, masks, right? So basically, either you'd have to export all your masks from Photoshop or recreate them in Substance. Um, and by masks, I mean like see how I've, I've masked out the area where the skin applies. So say like I wanted to have, if I uh, had like this pattern here, um, and I applied this pattern in, 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 in Photoshop, and I applied a gradient map on the pattern part and a gradient map on the non-colored part, I couldn't say, oh, I want this part to be more specular unless I exported this mask and re-imported the substance, and then I'd have to basically create that mask twice. So it's less efficient, but I do find that the quality of the gradient maps in Photoshop are much nicer than the gradient maps and substance, unfortunately. Um, so it is up to you what you want to do. I've already shown you how to create gradient maps here um, and shown you the painting process when it came to the skin. It's very much the same stuff everywhere else. Um, but we're going to use substance to create the gradient map for the rest. Um, that way I demonstrate both things. Um, yeah, I hope everyone's uh, following along so far. <laughs> if you have any questions, just let me know. Um, so that was, that's that part. Um, okay, so the next thing that I want to do is um, I, I have this and I've, like we did last week, we, we created like a couple edits because there was some areas that had uh, some baking issues around this wrapping um, and we made some fixes. Um, so what I end up doing is I go into each of these and I go in and I take all of these, um, the ones that I've edited, pull them out, um, and then I just go file, save as, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to like go into the wrong folder because I don't want to go to work folders accidentally, but uh, you can just go file, save as, save to wherever you want. I usually create a folder of targas and I export all the targas again um, and have them ready to import into Substance Painter. 
Yeah. Uh, oh, and these UVs are so optimized. They're they could be more optimized, <laughs> but they're 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 they they do the trick. Um, eating breakfast, yeah, no worries. Um, makes you want to redo your UVs. Eh? Uh, like if you look at the UVs, they're not actually that that great. There's a lot of wasted space up here. I could have done better, but um, you know, you do your best. Uh, and there's a bunch of things to consider when you're doing your UVs as well. I've talked about this already, but like, say you're using specularity and you want to have a specific direction on, um, on your hair, for instance, if you want to use like a, an anisotropic map, um, you would have to make sure that uh, that uh, your your UVs are in a specific direction, unless you're using a directional map, that you might not be. Right. So there's there's things to consider, right? Like sometimes you have to like sacrifice. Um, spacing for other things. Um, far from that optimized, it takes a, it, it takes patience uh, to get to get things packed really really tightly. Um, but uh, let us go on to doing the next thing, which is in Maya. Um, wait, no, I've already done this. I've exported it, so it's we've exported this from Maya in Substance. I have already imported this. Um, but what you can do is you go to, um, when, it, when you're starting up Substance, you go File, New, right? Uh, hold on, let me just hide my screen for one second. Um, okay, File, New. Uh, perfect, okay. Um, all right, so you do File, New. I usually don't use a template. <laughs> I know a lot of people use template. It's if you're, if you're working like on a big project, eventually you'll have a template because you have specific ways you're working with your materials. If I'm just doing a one-off character like this, I don't have a template. So I'm just going to say nothing, right? And then you go select, you select your mesh, and you import it. Um, I'm using OpenGL. Um, you can use uh, DirectX. The problem there is that DirectX uses negative Y on the normal maps. Um, and that's not what Unity or Maya uses. So I use OpenGL in order to get the proper appropriate normal maps. Um, but you can use DirectX if you're using Unreal or something else. Um, okay, well, welcome in. Uh, okay, so that's good. Uh, so now that we have this, you can see I have all my native materials. And the great thing about having your different materials is you can show and hide different things. Obviously, I'm going to hide the, the ground plane because um, that was just to get the, uh, the, the uh, scene uh, centered properly. And um, we got our ambient occlusion eye thing. We don't really need that. It's just there. I could do it if I wanted. Um, but that's fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to import all the, the, the textures that I need. Um, so what I have here is I have my targets folder. Um, and uh, these are like all the textures that I've exported. I'm not showing my folders right now, but trust me, they're there. <laughs> um, cool. So now I'm just going to drag them over. Um, I'm going to select them all. And they are going to be set to texture. And I'm going to set them to the current project. Yeah, and then we're gonna import them. Go. There they are. Um, probably not gonna get onto all the body parts today. Um, we'll we'll quickly hop on and we'll throw on a quick uh, base texture on everything, but we'll mostly go on on detail on the main body. I'm just gonna probably cover you know some different material properties, um, so the cloth and the cape, and maybe some metal, maybe some skin, and then we'll go from there. Um, I'm still loading the file. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I thought my, my screen was hidden for a second. I was like, oh no. <laughs> I've been talking all this time and no one's seen anything. Crap. All right. Um, okay, so normal map goes on our normal map. And we got our world space. Um, you know, goes in the world space. ID map. Uh, we got our ID map. Our ambient occlusion. Oh. Um, one thing about ambient occlusion, before I put that on, I will go over that in a moment. Um, cavity, that will be used later. Curvature goes in there. All right, so we're going to bake. Notice I didn't put the ambient occlusion in there, um, and there's a reason for that. Um, so we're going to unclick everything that we do not need to bake. I go to ambient occlusion. I'm going to turn off ignore back bases, and I'm going to turn up the occluder distance, um, the minimum and maximum, um, so that it catches everything that I want. And we're going to do a quick bake and hope that it doesn't chug the stream too much. Um, so I'm just going to quickly click that and bake, all right, give it a second, 
Cool, not too bad. Now, what I've done here is I've created an additional ambient occlusion map. Um, this ambient occlusion map uses projection from other objects onto other objects, right? So basically the cape is occluding the body and the shoulder pad is occluding the shoulder, pad, the shoulder area, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the reason I do this is because I have this very clean ambient occlusion map that I faked out from, from, uh, from, from Marmoset where I've separated all the parts and none of the parts influence each other. Um, and the great thing about that is that um, now I have control over how much um, occlusion I have in different areas. So I have, I can say like, oh, I want to have occlusion from, on the, from the body on itself, but I don't want to have the, the cape in there because the cape moves around a lot. So I could say like, oh, I'll just use this ambient occlusion map for the body area and then paint out any of the uh, occlusion from the cape. Um, it just allows, it, it makes it easier to kind of like uh, separate the two, right? Um, so we're going to drag that into our, uh, boom, we're going to put that into our ambient occlusion. So we're going to put the regular ambient occlusion back in. And we just have that extra one uh, for when we need it later. Um, baking stream, yeah. Cable, don't do that to me. Um, yeah. Okay, so good, we've done that. Um, we're gonna import the other textures now. Um, so we've got our uh, hair and sword that we gotta add in. So let's do that. Uh, all right, and we're just gonna import those like we did before. You notice these are PSDs. Now, another, uh, another workflow that I sometimes do if I'm not doing any painted stuff in Photoshop is I might edit all of them manually. So that's why when I bake them from Marmoset, I bake them as PSDs so I can jump into PSD and then I can paint over on a separate layer. And if I mess something up, I can just undo the paint over um, if I feel like the, it just didn't look quite right. And that's why I save them as PSDs. Um, and if I'm doing them separately, I just leave the original PSDs and just import those as opposed to um, you know, re-exporting them as targets. Texture, project, import. All right, so we got those two. Um, I'm gonna save this file and we're gonna go into the other, uh, the other ones and I'm just gonna quickly uh, drag and drop them on. Um, I'm not gonna worry about baking the other ambient occlusions right now. I've already shown you how to do that. Um, you can do that on every asset if you like. Um, so the next thing is hair. We're gonna do normal map, world space normal map, ID map, uh, occlusion map, Curvature, and those other two we obviously have to bake. Uh, so we're just going to bake those. I did not bake this at a high enough resolution, so that's a mistake. I will bake that again later. I don't want to chug the stream, but make sure you set these to uh, you know a, re reg a, uh, a decent resolution. Um, so I'm just going to bake these on the hair. These don't take as long as the ambient occlusion, so I am just going to put them up for those. But I'm not going to bake the ambient occlusion right now for obvious reasons. Um, okay, cool. So that is that. Um, and then we're going to do the sword. Um, and then we have air, air, we have air. Um, okay, so we have our normal map, our world space normal map, ID map, and we have the cruiser map, curvature, bake those last two. Oops, didn't, didn't get on there. Get on there, bake, mm -hmm. bake. Okay, great. We are all set here. Now, um, I will also um, get, a, uh, get the eye on there. Um, it just, it's nice to have a little bit of a preview. We're going to import this as a texture. Uh, import project, import, okay. Um, project. Uh, why is it? Oh, there it is. Okay, so it'll be like, hey, how dare you? Um, eyeball. Eyeball goes in here too. Um, we're going to do texture, project, import. All right. So the nice thing about having those in there is that we get a little bit of a preview, right? So um, the eye ambient occlusion, for example, I'm going to have to add a, uh, an opacity channel. Uh, I would probably have to add an opacity channel to the hair as well. So we'll probably do that. 
Um, skin is probably going to get an emissive. For skin, I like to kind of fake subsurface with emissiveness. Um, so that's just a, it's just it's just like a stylistic thing you can do. You can use you can use uh, you know regular skin shading and stuff as well. Use masking. Um, it's entirely up to you, um, but I'm not doing that. Um, okay, so uh, opacity is in there. We got to go into our display settings, our display settings, shader settings. Make sure that we have our opacity in here. Now we're rough with alpha blending. Um, alpha test. Uh, yeah, let's go with alpha blending. Okay, alpha blending, and we're gonna put the eye ambient occlusion on there. First, we're gonna what we're going to do is we're gonna fill this with a base color. Uh, it is still gray. We want to set this to black. Um, we want to set the roughness all the way up. All right. Okay. And then what we do is we go in here and we say our our opacity is also the one here. We're going to do another fill, um, and this one is just going to affect the opacity. All right. Um, and we're going to um, project. Um, put this in the opacity channel. Um, okay. And uh, um, I feel like I'm doing something wrong here. Hold on. Uh, I'm going to turn that off for a second and try this. Oh, okay. Okay. Anyway, um, we're going to go into here and we're going to do uh, levels. Um, yes, we're going to go into opacity, invert it. Uh, okay, so the mistake I made was uh, an easy one to fix. Hold on. Okay. Um, just going to fill this with white. That is not white. I'm gonna fill this with white. <laughs> I'm going to merge these down. Save it. Paint that down. We're going to re import this. Reload. There we go. There we go. That's the ticket. Drag that in there. Aha! There we go. Perfect. It used to be a black and white mask, not a, uh, not with an actual alpha channel. And I forgot. There we go. Cool. So we got the eye and beta occlusion. And we got our eye texture. And we're going to throw our eye on there. Um, I could have created an eye normal map, and I should have. Um, that is a mistake on my part. Uh, so we're going to do that real quickly. Um, but for now, we're just going to drag that on there. There she is. There's the eye texture. Um, and I'm going to go in here. We're going to make sure that this eye is open. Right, let me let me just pull up an old normal map that I have for my eye. We're just going to use that uh, eye normal. Okay. Um. All right. This is an old texture that I actually don't particularly like. Um, I would get rid of this circle, but for our purposes, it's fine. To create this, all I did was I just extruded a circle into a plane, right? Uh, or not even that. Basically, you do this. You take, you take a sphere, right? I just don't want to bake it now. That's why I'm using it, but I'll show you how to create that eye texture. Bake, right? Um, and then we just crush it down. 
So um, we're going to reverse our normals, right? Uh, and then we just take this tool symmetry off, right? We're just going to span that out. Uh, okay, like so. There we go. And uh, you just bake this to a plane, right? So um, make sure that's big enough. Right? Um, but yeah, you just bake this to a quad, right? So if we put a quad there. Yeah. Okay. Make sure the quad is perfectly square and these are lined up, right? Uh, obviously, they would be at the center of the world. And uh, yeah, so you just export this into Marmoset and we just bake it out like we bake out everything else. And you'd get this kind of indentation in your normal map, which is essentially how I got this, except I also extruded a little circle in the middle because I thought that would look good, but I don't like it. Uh, I know some people make separate UVs for se different parts. Any reason you decide to have UVs on one map? Um, so there's, there's, t there's a number of reasons why. Um, if, you have, um, if you have everything on one map, it is better for performance um, because you have fewer draw calls. Um, so that is the main reason why I would keep everything on one map. Um, when I decide to create a new map, I generally just do it if I have to use a different material for that object. So say um, the hair and the skin use different shading models. So I would put them on separate materials. If something has alpha, I'll generally put that on its own material as well because alphas tend to be a little bit funky. Uh, and I like to keep those separate because if, um, if it creates culling issues on an object, um, you can mitigate that by not including it on anything that doesn't need it. So anything that has transparency on it will probably have some culling issues, um, but if you isolate those areas, you won't notice them quite as much. Uh, a normal map. Wow. How are you doing, Courtney? Gonna try this later? Yeah, yeah. So that's how I get like that kind of cup shape for the eye in normal maps. Um, now, I, ideally, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna do this later, so ignore Ignore this circle in the middle where it's not going to be there, um, but we'll get rid of that later. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into this eye texture and I'm just going to be all janky about it and I'm going to make it line up. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to make this line up to my eye. So um, Obviously you'd bake it to the right size. Um, what I would actually do is I'd bake the circle a little bit bigger so that I could scale it down and line it up with my texture. Um, just because you know, you know, it's, you're never gonna have it perfect, right? And you wanna be able to adjust it a little bit in Photoshop. So I would recommend just baking the circle a little bigger and then uh, you, can, you have a little bit of freedom to adjust as needed. Um, but there you go. I'm gonna hide my screen for a second while I save this file. Uh, um, all right, okay, save it, okay, um, great, we got that, and I'm going to show my screen again, and we're going to take that eye texture, and we're just going to drag her in there, all right, texture, Project. import, okay, so we're in, we're in here now, um, and we're going to go into our... This is just for preview purposes, so I'm just going to just drag the normal map on there. There we go. So we got a little bit of a lighting thing. You'll notice there's a little bit of funkiness. We got that circle there that doesn't line up with the iris because I don't want it there. Um, and that'll go away later. But um, just know that it's there and I'm aware of it. You can use different materials in the same UVs. Yes, you can. Um, however, you're probably not going to save when you do that. The only thing you're going to save is like maybe file space or file size. Um, you're probably not going to save on draw calls because you're still using two materials. Um, so there's still a draw for each material. Um, I'm not super, super savvy on, on the tech side, but um, that is uh, the general idea is like uh, 
you'll, you'll, you're just going to have another draw call. And the more draw calls you have, the, the more uh, processing needs to happen, right? So there we go. Um, we've, we've taken our first step. Now, um, what we have to do from here is um, create our base, uh, base colors. And what I'd like to do um, is I'd like to start with a gradient map. Uh, so uh, we've talked about gradient maps before, and I'm going to create a, another gradient map here um, and kind of show you how you can create gradient maps in substance. Uh, so that's why you did the hair and the eye on different UVs. Yeah, so the, the hair is, well, I did them on different UVs because they are shaded differently. Um, and yeah, there, I just felt there isn't much reason to have them on the same map. Um, and also the eye, um, the eye more specifically is on a different map for a, very, uh, for a little bit of a different reason. Um, and that reason is that it will use displacement. Um, and if I use a displacement map, I have this tiny circle and a big empty space. Like, uh, I'll show you what, what a displacement map would look like, okay? So this is a displacement map for the eye, right? It uses this circle. Um, and this circle displaces the texture. Now, what would happen if I had the eye in the main map and I wanted to have displacement? I'd have this huge white texture with a little black dot in it, right? Um, because the displacement just happens in a tiny little space on the texture map. Um, and that's just a huge waste. <laughs> Um, also, I like to give a little bit more texture density to the eyeball itself. It has a little bit more detail and people tend to look at the eyes a lot more. Uh, similar to how we uh, scaled up the UVs for the face eh, when we were doing the UV mapping. Um, and that's, what, that's the thing to, to consider. So when you're making characters, the, um, the UV maps uh, are handled a little bit differently. Um, when you're doing environments, it's very, very important to keep everything uniform and everyone wants to have like, okay, texture density, textile density the same on everything. On characters, it's a little different. Um, sometimes you're going to want to have some areas with more texture de textile density than other areas. Um, for instance, the face, the hands, anything that you're going to be focusing on more. Um, little trinkets, um, props, things that are small that might get close-up shots. Um, you give those a little bit more space because they, they draw more of the eye. This is also very common in, in like cinematics and stuff. I'm rambling now, um, but it's very common in, in cinematics and, and things like that where the, there's like less detail uh, away from the focused focal point of a shot, right? It's very similar in that sense, where it's basically like, where are you going to be looking more? If you're going to be looking more here, have more textile density here, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right? Okay, so we've done this. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly hide my screen one more time. Um, and I'm going to go into my smart materials and I'm going to grab my smart material. Okay. Um, yeah, all right. And the reason I'm grabbing my smart material is, um, uh, is because it, it's, I've, I've created a gradient map already and I can explain how it's, how it's built without having to start from scratch and ramble and get lost. <laughs> so. To create a gradient map um, in, uh, in Substance, what you have to do is um, first, uh, you, create a, you create a texture like this. I'm going to start from scratch, but I'll, I have this just to kind of, for reference, because I, I often forget things. Um, and what we're going to do is in our main color, we're going to add a fill, right? Um, and you can see that these are all fills, right? And I've just named them, right? So this is just called cavity, for instance, right? Um, so there's our cavity map, and we're going to go into our textures, right? Uh, new uh, project, and we have our cavity map, right? And we just drag our cavity map into our cavity. Um, hold on, I have to, I have to be on here. <laughs> drag our cavity map onto our cavity map, like so. Um, also, we're only working with color right now, so I'm going to hide everything else. Uh, color is all I care about. Um, same with this. Uh, the funny thing is that if you have all of these turned off on the upper layer and you don't have it on one of these, it's still going to affect that layer. Um, and I've made that mistake plenty of times where I have something that just has this opacity or it's anyway, or it's metallic because this layer had this on and that it didn't have it everywhere else. Um, yeah. Anyway, moving on. So that's our cavity map. Um, so the first thing, cavity map. Uh, and we set that to multiply. Um, 
So that applies over top of our color. If we go in here and we can um, go into color mode, this color, you can see that this is the cavity map applied to the surface, um, like so. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is I want to set this base color to be something a little bit less white, a little bit more gray. I like to have a, a nice mid-tone. Um, so probably something around this. I believe 256-ish is middle. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, just close enough. Um, so we got our cavity, and we're going to add another fill, right? Um, and we notice if we're doing multiply, this is the same thing that we did in Photoshop, by the way, right? So on each layer um, of our base color, um, we created these groups, right? And this was our base color, right? Our, our mid gray, our ambient occlusion is a multiply. Cavity map also multiplies at about 42%, 40%. Um, and you can, you can tone those down as much as you want, right? So I, I could do that as well. Um, the values are a little bit different. That's why I say I don't really like the, the gradient map uh, workflow in Substance quite as much because their blending layers work a little differently and I'm not a big fan of it. Um, but it's something to be aware of. And we have our, we have our ambient occlusion, right? Um, and we're just gonna take our ambient occlusion and drop it on uh, base color. Oop. And we're gonna remove everything else because we only want color influence. Now we have ambient occlusion in there, right? Now we go on to our next layer, curvature. Curvature, not like this, wrong button. Add a, add, and you gotta right click at paint, um, being dumb. Okay, um, we got a curvature, curve. Right. Uh, you can call them whatever you want, doesn't matter. Curvature, I do a nice overlay. Um, in Photoshop, I use a soft light, but I don't like how soft light works in here, so we're using an overlay. Um, and uh, so we're just gonna drag our curvature onto the thing. Uh, there's our curvature. Let's find our slot. Where are you slot? Okay, I'm gonna drag this down because I need more space to see. Um, this is a brush. Oh, I made the wrong layer. I added a paint instead of a fill. Ah, there we go. Add fill. That explains a lot. Curve. All right, curvature map goes on to the curvature thing. I'm just gonna do that. Doom, 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 doom. Set this to overlay. Uh, boom. Great. It's a little. It's, it's a lot. It's very too powerful. <laughs> it's very much too powerful. I'm gonna turn that down a little bit. Um, great. So now we have. Look, we're getting this nice shading, right? By default, for for free. Look at that. We're just using our bakes, and it's giving us lighting and painted, in, uh, like kind of this painted information that isn't actually painted. It's it's generated, but it gives that feeling, right? Like it looks like I painted in these highlights and shit. <laughs> um, anyway. So we're gonna do another one, and we're gonna do add, uh, this one's a little bit different. We're gonna do an added generator. Um, so the, the add the generator, a um, little different. Um, I kind of forced this to work. Um, so what I did was, I have to remember what I did. It's been a while since I've created this from scratch because I, I created this node and I use it all the time. Um, but okay, so what I use is my world space and all the maps to create a top-down light. So what I use uh, from the uh, world space normal maps is a, a little bit of, um, I usually use the Y channel. And by using the Y channel, I can get this kind of top-down light. What I've done here is I've used the generator to create the same effect. Add generator. And we're gonna do a, um, I think it was a, a, a builder, uh, a mask editor, no. Um, there is, I believe there is one for world space. Yeah, there it is. World space normals. That's the one. Yeah. Um, generator world space normals. That is outdated apparently. Um, so I made this before the new one. I'm going to use the new one. Actually, I might replace this node <laughs> if this works better, but you can already see I'm getting this top down light, I think. I'm gonna hide these other ones so we can get a better idea. Oh wait, this, it, the others are not affecting it right now. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Balance, all right. So now we can say like how much of this top-down light, there it is, yeah, see? By default, it's giving us this top-down light. And we can say how much we want that to influence. Um, I forget how much I put it before, about 0.5, right? I think that was the default, because I'm lazy. Um, I'm gonna put it down a little bit though. I don't quite like it being that softened. So I'm going to put it about 
Um, I disagree with old me. Past me is wrong. Um, okay, so then we're going to do overlay. Right? And we have a little bit of a top down light. We're going to turn on the, uh, the effects of this. Right? Uh, maybe about 50. Um, and we can see the difference here. This one has color information, which is why it looks different. Um, we'll get to color in a minute. Um, okay. And then what we do is we add a great node. Um, so we add a filter, right? And we have a gradient map. I believe this is it. No nope, gradient curve. Where is it? Where is my node? Give it to me. Gradient. Gradient. There it is. Okay. This is the gradient node, which works like a gradient map in Photoshop. Um, your game's getting quite the traction. Oh, you mean uh, the um, yeah, Pelium? I'm glad that people are liking the game. Thank you. Um, to clarify, it's not my game, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it's it's nice. It's cool. Uh, okay, so um, now. Uh, now we, can, we have three colors, right? We have our dark, uh, medium, and light colors, right? Um, so these are like the positions in, uh, in, in, uh, in, our, our, in our gradient map in Photoshop. So if you look at Photoshop, we, we created a gradient map earlier, right? Um, so our gradient map looked like uh, this, right? Um, I think this is a cleaner one to look at because it's, it's simpler, right? So we got our dark, our medium, and our light color, right? And we can change the positions on here, right? So similarly in here, we can change the position by moving the sliders up and down. And we can say like when we want this to come into effect, right? Um, and uh, now what we're going to do is we can pick whatever color we want in these areas. Um, because this is just a base color, I'm just going to leave it as gray, but you can say whatever you want. So you can say, like, shadows I want to be red, um, mid-tone I want to be blue, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, well, this is like a, a turquoise, but you get the idea, right? So we got a dark, medium, and whatever. Um, because it's a base color, again, I'm just going to keep it black. Um, we're going to turn this down a little bit because it takes influence too early, all right? Um, and this is going to be our gradient map node. Gradient map. Mm -hmm. No, no. Um, and there it is, right? Um, I'm going to play around with these values a little bit, maybe influence this a little bit more, right? Um, and you um, essentially would be creating a gradient map for each material, each color on the pro on the model, right? So see how it's like it's it's really too strong in the face. I paint I painted the face in Photoshop, but if you painted it here, um, this would be too strong for the face, right? You get we have way too much contrast. Um, face should be softer. Right. Um, but um, maybe something like the metal, I want it to be more intense because I want to really bring out those edges, right? Um, so I'd have a different one for the metal and for the skin. Um, but for the time being, we're just going to drag this here and we're going to drop it like that, right? Um, so we have our base. Uh, yeah, well, we'll delete that. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this onto all of our other objects as a base for now. Um, because this is our base color, I'm actually going to turn all of these on. So we get a bit of a base. I usually put the roughness all the way up to one for the base. What's going to happen here is once you start creating masks and stuff, is uh, this is going to bleed through in all like the little cracks and crevices. I may um, even have this just be pure black um, when we start doing everything else. For now, though, I'm going to leave it like this. Um, and we're going to do the same thing on our sword. Uh, hold on. Actually, let me just copy this. I click copy node. Copy layers. Put this on here. Paste layers. Um, and same thing for the sword. Right click, paste layers. Boom. All right. So we have a base. We're going to go to our material mode. Uh oh. <laughs> I made a mistake. How could this happen to me? I made a mistake. Um, metallic off. 
Okay, so something is wrong with the materials. Uh, let me have a look. Color, color, color. Aha! There we go. Like I said, I've done this a lot. Where I make that mistake where I put this in there and it just influences everything. And it's wrong. So I have to go into the hair and I'm just going to fix that too, you know. Um, gradient, that's hair, sword. Uh, pebble. One year anniversary. Two year anniversary, actually. Um, thank you very much for that sub. You've been supporting me for a very, very long time. And I, I really appreciate it, my friend. How, how are you doing? Welcome in. For year three, I'll learn to count. You'll, you'll get it. You'll get it one day. You'll get it one day. And same thing here, let's fix that. All right, so there we go, we have a base. Um, I do have to fix the cavity map on the others. Um, so the one other thing too is because the cavity map isn't part of the, the base mesh maps, and I don't think you can add them as a thing. I've never been able to figure that out. Um, the cavity map obviously doesn't update automatically, so we have to actually go in and attach it ourselves. We're just going to drag the cavity map on there, um, and that should fix the hair. You'll see like all like that extra noise is there because it's put, applying the body cavity map on the hair. Same with the sword; you can see all these weird noise and stuff. Not supposed to be there. Um, so we can go to our cavity map and uh, apply the appropriate one, like so, and we're good. And we have a base now. Cool. So we are we're off to a good start here. Um, Pebble has been here since the land before time. Yeah, Pebble was one of. Uh, the original supporters, and also the reason we have a Discord. <laughs> um, Nas too, Nas is there, yeah. Very early on. Um, and I appreciate you guys greatly. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to export these. Let me hide my screen one more time. Um, I'm going to go to export textures, make sure that everything looks good. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my export settings. And the reason I want to hide this is because, yeah, that's what I thought. I'm going to, let me see how I can do this. Because um, okay. I have some presets for work as well, and I don't want to accidentally show those. So I'm, going to just, I'm just going to screen cap my settings and explain them. Um, well, you know what I can do? I can probably like slightly have the window off screen. Um, like this. Okay, here we go. Okay, this will work. Um, okay, great. So here I have my export settings. Um, on the left you'll have a bunch of previews, but I've, I've hidden that uh, because work stuff. Um, and um, what I generally have for my exports are my diffuse, right, which is my base color. And any opacity channel would go in the opacity channel. You want to add new ones, um, you can click on any of these types. So you can have like an RGB plus alpha, or you could have like all the RGB a separate, and then you could put an individual thing in each slot, etc. etc. Um, my naming convention has since changed, um, or well, no, it hasn't, but it will for my next project. I want it to change because I realized I should probably have a prefix for my textures, and I don't. I just have suffixes, um, so in the future I'm probably going to be using prefixes, and you can just like add a prefix, right? So it's like texture, or whatever, uh, underscore thing. Um, but anyway, um, and then this texture set dollar sign, um, you can probably look these up, but this essentially gets you the name of the material, right? So this would be replaced by M underscore Zoe or Zoe hair, etc. Um, I usually edit these, um, so I would get rid of the M underscore stuff so that my texture name doesn't inherit the M underscore, um, because I don't like that. Um, and what I normally export is I export my diffuse, my normal map, my ambient occlusion, roughness, metalness. Now I export all these things, but I don't actually tend to use them. <laughs> the ones I actually use 
are my diffuse, normal map, roughness, middleness. Um, specular, occasionally, um, because I used to use specular for hair, um, and I still do. Um, in Unity, uh, my shader uses specular, um, so I use that for a hair export. Um, but we don't necessarily need that. Um, it's up to you. Um, emissiveness, and I don't use this either, but I, I use the, the emissiveness, emissiveness if the texture has it. Um, and there you have it. So I export those things. Um, and then what we do is we go into our export settings. Um, what I like to do is I will export all the things that I need. I do not need any of these three to be exported, only these ones. Um, and we set this to a target. Right? So we go to targets. And I'm going to select my folder. Let me hide my screen. Right, I'm going to select that folder. Workshop textures. I'm going to select my textures folder for the project. Right? There it is. Um, so we selected our uh, textures folder. And we're just going to export these as targets. Again, targets, very important. Um, export. And we got them. Great. So the reason I'm doing this now, um, I like to check with my final rendering tool as I texture. Um, so I will be exporting often um, because what you see in Substance is not in any way accurate <laughs> to what the final render will be. Um, so it's very important to go back and forth quite a bit. Right? So we're going to save this. We're going to open up Marmoset again. Right? And what we're going to do with Marmoset is we are going to create a base setup of a scene. Let me quickly catch up with chat. Uh, by the way, guys, you can join the Discord. Yes. Um, sound like PoE crafting for a second. Uh, add a random prefix. Remove a random suffix. That's fair. That's fair. Um, OK, so uh, in our textures folder, I've exported all of these textures. I don't need those right now. Actually, I need to get my mesh. So. I've exported the mesh for substance earlier. I'm just going to drag that into my scene here. Right. There she is. Um, ooh. Okay, she has too many parts. I forgot about this. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do file new again. Nope. Um, and we're going to go back into Maya. Now, what I like to do in Maya is uh, I like to create a uh, Combined meshes, uh, because Substance or Marmoset does not like, or does not combine meshes, right? So in Substance, you can select your meshes by material. It doesn't matter if you export it as a bunch of parts. Um, however, in Marmoset, it does matter. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to, first, we don't need the ground. Marmoset doesn't care about origins and stuff, so that's great. Um, duplicate, and we're going to uh, hit zero on that. We're going to combine that, history. Um, and this is going to be our mesh sword. Right? Sword. Hide that, and we're going to go in here, and we're going to duplicate this. Right? Isolate that and combine this. Combine history. Boom. Uh, mesh. Zoe hair. We're going to hide that, and um, we're going to take our eyeballs. Um, we only have one eye, um, so I'm going to actually just duplicate these and unparent them. Freeze transforms for the sake of ease. Um, set the origin to the ground. So, and we're going to do mesh I. So, yeah, yeah. Cool. And we're going to take that, and then we're going to go into here. So, everything that is not eyes. That's right. Super technical. Select the non-eye objects uh, and combine them like we did before. There we go. Perfect. Um, and we're just going to name that properly. Uh, we're going to unhide all that stuff. And I like to keep them separate by material um, because it's easier to do assignments in, um, in, in Marmoset that way. Right? So these are our, uh, this is going to be a GRM. Um, combined meshes. Um, and this is also good uh, for after rigging and stuff. What I tend to do is I use these combined meshes. Um, and these are the ones that will be, will receive the final uh, rigging information and will be exported. Because in engine, you're not going to want to have 100 pieces either. 
if you're exporting to say Unity or um, Unreal, you're going to want to have uh, fewer parts. Right? Um, you're still using Marmoset 3? Yes. Um, I have not used 4 yet. Um, I tried 4 uh, in the beta. It just didn't have anything that I really needed right now, so I have not upgraded. Um, but I will upgrade eventually. Um, hey, Alec, how are you doing? My 2016? Yes. Um, so I have a perpetual license of 2016, and it just doesn't make sense for me to subscribe if I have a perpetual license. So I'm using 2016. Anything I do here, you can do in any of the other Mayas because I use the newer Mayas at work. So I know that this works. Um, you'll be fine. Now what we're going to do is we're going to export this as a, the appropriate file. So export selection. Um, and this is going to go into our... Um, I'm going to create a Marmoset folder. Um, or I guess a render folder, whatever you want to call it, render. Um, and this is going to be Zoe and Tipos. There we go. Um, and I'm going to hide the combined meshes. Save this. If we go back to Marmoset, and we'll fix it up. Um, and we're going to go into our bake. No, not our bake. Our render folder. And we're going to take our Tipos character, drag her in. There she is. Right. Our lighting here right now is to, uh, um, why is there so many parts? Hold on. <laughs> File name. No. Um, I guess I didn't export this properly because it didn't export properly. So I probably didn't export all instead of an export selection, like an idiot. Export selection. Uh, yeah. Cool. Cool, cool. Um, we'll drag her in. See what happens. There we go. Now we've done it. Perfect. Okay, so what I like to do first is I like to create a, um, you know, a, a somewhat neutral sky. Right? Um, so I'm going to go in here and um, pick one that's a little bit brighter. Uh, another good thing to do while you're working is try your character in different lighting conditions. Um, so play around with these as you're working. Uh, see what they look like in different in different conditions. In fact, you can even duplicate this guy, and you can turn on different ones, and the other one will get turned off automatically. Um, and you can just like toggle in different uh, different lighting scenarios. Right? Um, and what I tend to do is I create a uh, base sky and a lighting setup, and I drag the lighting setup under the sky node, and that way I can kind of create these little groups. So, for instance, we want say we wanted to keep this, and this is our sky night, right? So this is our night lighting, right? Night. Um, we have our regular sky, and this is our day, right? So we have day. Um, we'll hold, hold on to this night for later. Um, and for the presets here, um, let's pick one. I usually like Desert Road or Castle Sunset. You know, those ones are nice. I hear people like this one. If you rotate it around, it actually looks neutral. I've never found that. Um, I mean, like, yeah, if you turn it around, you get kind of like this kind of more flat, Lighting, um, more diffuse, um, but I do find that this is incredibly dark, um, and most of my games, at least, are very bright. So I tend to like to view characters in a brighter setting. Um, I do like the sunset; it does add a little bit of an orange, right? So that's something to keep in mind too: is that your textures will look a little bit orange with the sunset. Um, Desert Road is nice because it is, you know, standard day lighting. But yeah, just find whatever you like. Whatever works for you. I'm going to set this back to zero. Does it rose looks uh, road rose? Yeah, uh, road looks cool. Yeah, I like it. Um, so we're going to do this. We're going to hit F, um, Control F, sorry, to frame it. Rotate around. We're good. Um, okay. So uh, another thing I want to do is move the sword out to the side. Uh, you can move that here. Right, so boom. Um, that's easier to see now. Um, and we have our base. So now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook these up to the Substance exported textures. And when I do that, every time I export from Substance, these will automatically update. Um, so I can just, you know, export from, Z from Substance, click over here, and it'll look perfect. So what we're going to do 
is we're going to go in here and we're going to take our diffuse map, drop it in the diffuse, um, and we're going to take our normal map, um, drop drop it into our normal map. Like so, boom, um, and we have our uh, changes to roughness and change this to metalness. Right? Um, obviously, everything is going to get very metal um, off the bat, but that's okay because we are working on it. Perfect. Boom, there we go. So that is a good base, right? Um, same thing for the sword. Right? Sword, base color, boom. Then we go and add our normal map. Uh, sword normal map, boom. Change to roughness, change to metalness. Um, do the same thing for the sword, boom. And roughness on the sword. Where is our reference? There it is. Boom. Uh, and lastly, the hair. Well, no, I gotta visit the other materials too. Hold on. <laughs> One step at a time. One step at a time. Um, so we're gonna do our base color for here. Right. Um, you'll notice it's inherited the color value that I inputted from Maya. Let's just set that up to white. Um, and we're gonna do our metalness and roughness. Right. Um, keep in mind too, I'm doing this in Marmoset because I want to render my final render in Marmoset. If you're using an engine, you're going to want to do the same process in the engine, right? Um, and then re-export every time and then um, and preview it there, right? Um, in Unity, if you want to do that, what you could do is um, you could uh, export from Substance into the Unity folder and the Unity folder will update automatically. If you Bring it, put it somewhere outside of Unity, and then import it to Unity. You'll have to re-import it every time, and that's a pain. So you might want to just send it directly to Unity. Unity is great that way; it'll automatically update. Unreal will not. Unreal, no matter what you do, you're gonna to have to go into Unreal and then say like reload or re-import uh, re textures. So you'll have to select the textures you want, right-click on them, and say re-import. Um, Unreal works a little bit differently because it has packages. Um, Okay, so now that we've done that, we're going to put our low chain. That is a that's a big raid. Welcome in. Hello everyone. We're talking about texturing. Thank you very much for that raid. How is your stream? How is how is modeling? How is robot creation? I believe you were doing. You were creating you're creating your little robot character. She looks great, by the way. Um Thank you, everyone. How are you doing? Welcome in. Uh, Chihula, Air Force, Plus, Yasha, uh, Chi, Chi, Chihula, <laughs> sorry, uh, Punish Shomer. Um, welcome in, everyone. It went well, uh, but now I need uh, salmon, so the robot has to wait. Fair enough. <laughs> Enjoy that salmon. Uh, I'm doing all right. We're just uh, going through the texturing process, uh, talking about texturing in Substance and Marmoset. Um, and uh, yeah, we're, we're, making, we're making our progress. Um, I'm just showing a uh, quick preview of our exported materials. Um, and then we're going to continue working on our uh, textures from there. Right? So there, we have exported those. And now we're going to work on the uh, eye and eyeshadow and uh, then we'll get on to the rest of the texturing. Um, Link Dave 07 is now following. Thank you for following. You love it? Well, thank you. Um, I need to go get food now, so I can't stay and have, but, uh, but have one. No worries. Thanks again for the raid. Um, <laughs> and thank you for the kind words, Shay. I appreciate it. Um, you don't bake on Marmoset? I do bake in Marmoset, yes. And we covered that last week. If you want to see, uh, Steveston89, thank you for following. Mochinade, thank you for following. If you want to see uh, our, what we did for baking, you can go to exclamation mark VODs. Um, and we covered that stuff uh, last week. And the VOD is up there on YouTube. Um, OK, so great. Now we're going to move on to this eye occlusion shadow. Um, so this one I actually have to revert. <laughs> um, or. Uh, Actually, let's try this. Yeah, yeah. I have a plan, and this plan will succeed as planned. There we go. Okay, so great. So this has a um, uh, transparency. So I'm going to add the transparency on there. 
Um, gotta do a dither. Um, typical dragon, thank you for following. Bun Bun Cow, thank you for following. Uh, and I believe that's everyone. Thank you very much. Um, been watching the VOD, uh, and honestly, quite good stuff uh, for anyone that is looking into creating characters. So I'm very glad to hear that. Okay, so now the, um, the occlusion here. Um, you'll notice it's, it's, it's dithered, right? So what we can do um, is we can change our uh, resolution settings. Uh, here we go. We can set it to double. That's about as much as we can do, but it'll look a little bit nicer. See, the dither is a little bit smaller now. Um, but you're always going to have a bit of a dither. That's kind of a sacrifice that games tend to make to uh, fight culling issues. Um, I'm a really 3D newbie, even though I started learning it a few years back and left it uh, as a not regular hobby. I uh, love it, but it's not easy to make a job out of, the, out of it in my industry, or in my country, sorry. Um, even though I'm thinking on deciding on it now that I... I uh, might quit my current job. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that about it being difficult in uh, your country specifically. Um, I don't know necessarily the rules of your country. Um, I know there's different rules that uh, kind of intentionally hinder things like that. So, I mean, like, I don't know what the possibilities are, but maybe you could try something like freelance because then you can work for any company anywhere. Um, but I know that some 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 countries are like uh, they they kind of penalize you for working outside of the country. Um, but it is something that is possible as well. Um, what I did when I was first like trying to start was I would I I just did it on the side of my other job. So I would have I essentially had two jobs where I was where I was working my regular day job and um, doing freelance on the side. Um, and uh, whilst that is a little bit uh, of a struggle for a while, that is a, one way that you can kind of transition as well. Um, if you can get a company to, to hire you and get you a visa, maybe you can work somewhere that's a little bit um, better for that job. Not an easy process, but it is, it is something to consider uh, working towards. Who rated? Shay rated with her, with her insane amount of viewers, and um, now I'm struggling to keep up. <laughs> uh, don't know uh, why I wrote to uh, Quite good stuff. I'll uh, straight up. It's uh, straight up good stuff. Great stuff. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, going uh, good. Uh, going good. Sculpting hard. Sculpting. Sculpting can be hard. Yes. Uh, I refuse to use another name. There. Um, I'm uh, from Colombia. Oh. Uh, there isn't uh, just a market um, uh, for 3D there. Might start doing freelance in the way you said it. Uh, I'll do my best, uh, but thanks for the tip. That's cool. Um, actually, one of my best friends is from Colombia, um, and she was uh, she she moved to Canada and worked on uh, and works in TV animation now. Um, she moved over by by schooling though, so basically she came here, um, and because she was. Um, in school, um, she was able to transfer to working um, and move to Canada, right? Um, pretend we're not here. <laughs> uh, you bet she did raid um, once a few uh, years ago, too, and the chat gets so much faster. Yeah. <laughs> um, only do hot stuff. And, um, moving to Canada, however, I can't. Why not? Um, it is just like not a possibility to leave the country just because of um, like connections and stuff. I, I don't want to pry too much, um, so don't answer that if you don't want to. Uh, but if um, I, it, like if there if it's like because you, you you have family or something, then that makes sense. Uh, yes, of blood. Thank you for following. Um, okay, so we're gonna set this eye now. Um, and what I do for the eye is I set this to, well, first we're going to do, hmm, do I want to do metalness? We could. Um, and roughness. Make it, um, you know what? Actually, no. I kind of want to use the specular model. And the reason I want to do that is because I like it better for eyes. Um, so we're going to do that. 
There we go. Cool. Um, we can apply that normal map that we exported earlier. The normal map will look a little funny, like I mentioned. I will have to go in and make this normal map better later, but I've already shown you how to do that. Um, but it is something to keep in mind. Um, and we can already see it taking effect on the lighting, which is wonderful. Um, and we're just going to change um, our kind of uh, intensity of that. Right? And that's great. So, oh, also on the, uh, the uh, ambient inclusion ring, I got to turn the specular off um, and the gloss off. Right? There we go. So now it, it plays uh, effect better. And we can also adjust the alpha if we think it's too intense. Um, I, like, I like a nice strong occlusion ring, so I'm going to leave it pretty high up there. And we're going to save this. I'm going to hide my screen for a second while I save this so I don't accidentally save to a work folder. Um, okay. Um, where is my folder? Render. There we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'll show that screen again. Now, if you don't mind, just give me one second. I'm going to grab some water because I've been talking a lot and I have no water. So give me one second, okay? Okay, sorry about that. Thank you for your patience. 
Uh, sorry, these uh, workshop streams require a lot of talking, so it's, it's, it does require, you know, water. Uh, let me quickly catch up. All right, so. Um, uh, yeah, no connections or anything right now, but I'll think of something. That's fair. Uh, I'm dead happy. Thank you for following. Uh, hold on a second. I also got. I just got a message. I have to take care of. Okay, um, not here. Uh, all right, I'm back a little bit. Okay, uh, left in the depths of silence to contend with our with the will of our of your moment, mommy. Jeez, the voice has become louder than that of the ear. Uh, honestly, refer it to it's uh, okay when uh, someone have a good taste, but sometimes you can uh, you want to listen to your own music. That's fair, yeah. The reason I don't have music on is because uh, I'm putting these up on YouTube, and I do not want them to be uh, you know taken down for uh, copyrighted music. Right? Um, okay, so uh, prefer it. Uh, fair enough. Uh, a uh, way to send music separately to Twitch so they could turn it on or off. That would be nice. Yeah. Um, there are sort of ways. Like, you could use a site that syncs everyone up. Um, I know that Pratt Bros use that. They, there's, like, this website where basically everyone is listening to the same tracks, but they play it on their own uh, through a second website. Um, should uh, maybe have some, I don't know. Wait, what? Uh, is it... Uh, should maybe have some I don't know some ambient sound in the background like rain oh, yeah. <laughs> or war sounds. Uh, excellent music, but uh, when he's doing workshop, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, had uh, ch children screaming. Oh no. Uh, so fair enough. Yeah. Sometimes you have dogs barking, but that's about it. <laughs> Sounds pretty neat. Yeah, yeah. I'd have to remember what it is, but I don't remember off the top of my head right now. Imagine copywriting rain. Hmm. Copyrighted by Zeus. <laughs> Can I just imagine like a Zeus logo with a little C next to it? <laughs> All right. Anyway, let's uh, let's get to doing the displacement on this eye. Uh, the displacement is always a little bit tricky, and this one's probably going to look weird because she's got this kind of slit pupil. Um, so it's probably not going to work right off the bat, but we're going to try. We're going to try our, our darndest. You know, we're going to try our darndest because that's what we have to do. Yeah, no, yeah. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to save this as a displacement map. Oh, there we go. Um, I'm gonna call this displacement. All right, save it. Twenty-four. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we go into our Bible, uh, and we go into our uh, not ironically not displacement. <laughs> uh, sorry, I keep still calling it displacement, but it's actually parallaxing. Um, we're not actually displacing the mesh. But uh, I, I believe you get what I mean. Um, there we go. Put that in there. And now we should be able to. There it is. Okay, that works a lot better than I expected it to. <laughs> First try! Pew pew! And we can change the depth of the eye. Look at that. When we view it from the side, it's not sitting on the front of the eyeball. It eventually, uh, you know, collapses once you get too far over, but pretty neat, right? 
and you get the kind of uh, the, the kind of uh, refraction effect on the eyeball, and you can change it to as much depth as you want. Um, keep in mind that when you texture the eye, uh, the more depth you add, the smaller the pupil is going to get. Um, so you might want to model the pupil in a way that's a little bit more, um, uh, like make it a little bit larger in your texture, so that when you uh, pull it back, it doesn't look, you know, super tiny. Something to keep in mind, though. You get a little bit of strange distortion. Um, you can see like it's a bit of a cup, um, which might not be ideal for this type of uh, pupil. Um, I might add a little bit of verticality to it to make it work better later, but this 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 will work for now, and it gives the idea. It's pretty sick, right? Um, now this unfortunately isn't built into a lot of engines. <laughs> um, I think the uh, the sample project in Unreal has something like this. Unity definitely did not. I had to do a lot of research to make a material that had this. And even then, it's kind of janky. Um, so I, yeah. <laughs> but in Marmoset, we're good to go. And I think as most of us are here are artists, um, I think this will do the trick because we're, we're rendering in, in, in Marmoset. Uh, Unity does it? Does it have displacement? Oh, the standard material does. Interesting. It just sucks. Ah. Okay, I created my own with uh, Shader Graph. Um, but it's probably worse. Use the height channel. Oh, okay. I should check that out. I'll play around with that off stream later. Um, okay, anyway, carry on. We have a base now, we have this set up. Um, there's a couple other things I want to do. Um, is I want to add a, a, a shadow catcher because it just looks nice. <laughs> Um, shadow catcher. Um, and I create some basic lights. So I create a light like this. Ooh, ooh, there we go. Um, hold on. No. Okay, great. So um, for previewing my characters, I usually do a three-point lighting system. Um, so I do a, not like this, um, I do a key light. So this is our key light. Key light. Uh, light key. All right. Um, so we got our key light, our fill light. Um, comes from the opposite side, um, fill light. Uh, fill light will be softer, right? Fill light will be softer, a bit of a different color, so light fill. Um, this is our fill light. Um, the light fill, usually, you know, darker, a little bit darker. But it's still kind of, it just reduces the intensity of the shadows a little bit, right? Um, and, um, and then we have our, uh, our bounce light. So anything that bounces off the ground, right? We get a little bit of a bounce light, um, like so, right? Um, I like to add a little bit of blue to my bounce light. Also my fill light, I tend to like to add a little bit of blue as well, um, but I, I need that little blue. Um, okay, um, and, uh, and then we just change the, uh, I'm, I'm contemplating whether I wanna have cast shadows on or not. I kind of don't, because the fill light is mainly just to soften the shadows, but all it's doing is creating additional shadows. So I'm actually going to turn the cast shadows off on the bounce. Um, I believe that the bounce is too intense. I'm going to reduce that a little bit. Um, and then we have our, um, our back lights or our rim lights. I usually create two lights for this. Um, so we have one here, and we just crank up that intensity real high. And we do another one here, um, like so. Um, and this is going to be um, light uh, rim 01, uh, herd of whale, oh yeah, sorry, I live near a highway. Um, okay, so now we get this nice rim light um, going on here. Uh, and I don't like what it's doing on the feet, I'll be honest. So what I'm probably going to do is uh, it back a little bit so that it doesn't affect the feet quite so much. We could play around with a number of things. You could change the 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 the, the, um, the sharpness, right? Um, you can change the angle um, and kind of like narrow down where we want it to be. Um, and we can do uh, you know brightness, distance, attenuation curve, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? Um, there's a number of things we can do. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a. Uh, I'm going to reduce the distance. Um, and I'm actually going to pull this up a little bit so that it doesn't quite affect the feet as much. Similarly on this one, we'll pull it up a bit, um, reduce the distance, 
So you still get a nice rim, um, but it's it's less uh, uh, overtaking and it doesn't make the foot white. <laughs> uh, making it directional would help with, a bit with the feet. Yeah, you could do directional as well. Um, you could do directional as well for sure. Uh, I just I, I don't know what it is. I like the spotlights. Another thing to keep in mind is our key light, um, our main light casting shadow. Um, it's going to be creating these really harsh, um, noisy shadows. See this? See this kind of like noisy edge? What we want to do is we want to increase the width on the light. Um, sorry. I did the opposite. Of, no, okay, there we go. It has like a breaking point. <laughs> so it actually got worse for a little bit and then it gets better. Um, but you just increase the width and then it softens up. Uh, that confused me for a second. And I want to do this actually for my fill as well, just to just to, just, just kind of reduce the, the 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 intensity of that shadow. Actually, don't even know where this one's casting shadows at all. Uh, but there you go. And this is our bounce light bounce. My bounce bounce light. All right. Cool. There we go. We did it. Um. So. We have now a base setup. And you might be asking, hey, stop. Why are you getting ahead of yourself? Why are you lighting your scene? Um, so the whole thing is I like to preview my textures um, in, a, in a variety of lighting scenarios. So I could just turn off all these lights if I wanted to. And I could be like, OK, this is what it looks like without light. This is what it looks like with light. In substance, you don't really have this level of control. Um, so I like to do that here. I'm going to create a group called lights. Um, and that'll be easier to turn on and off now as well. Hey, how's it going, Dustmite? Welcome in. Um, I'm just going to drag this into my day light box. And then I also have a night light box, right? So if I turn on light, night mode, right? So like I have another lighting scenario that is night. Um, I could probably duplicate these lights and we could do something for nighttime. I'm going to, uh, you know what? That actually looks pretty good for nighttime as well. Um, but if I wanted to, I could adjust these lights a little bit. Just stopping in for a minute, have to sleep soon. That's fair. That's fair. We're just going over um, character creation, and we're talking about uh, texturing today, and a little bit of lighting. Um, I hope you enjoy uh, for the time you're here, but thank you for stopping by. Um, it's good to hear from you. I hope everything's going well. Uh, okay, so rim lights. I do want to increase the, uh, the, uh, that width on the rim lights as well, like I, I did on the other one, because I'm noticing now um, that there is a little bit of weird sharpness going on. Um, but, uh, easy fix. Um, I just noticed some noise on the, uh, on the rim. So I just want to fix that. Um, and there we go. So this is looking pretty okay, right? We have a nice base color, base gray. Um, and, uh, we got our materials in place. And now we can go back to substance and continue texturing as we were before. Okay, so if we go into substance here, um, what we want to do is we want to start um, getting things in place. Now, um, I'll probably I'm I'm probably just going to stick to the the main um, body today because I don't want to be rambling forever. And once I've shown a few pieces, that's basically going to cover everything, right? So it's the same process everywhere else. So we're probably going to talk about skin, metal, and cloth. Um, maybe hair. We could talk a little bit about hair. Um, actually, hair might be a good idea. I have a whole video on hair, so maybe I won't go too far on hair, but um, we'll, we'll cover it a little bit. Um, I'm having Windows problems. Uh, sorry if I'm uh, not here. going to watch the VOD on YouTube later. Though. No worries. I'm sorry to hear you're having uh, problems with your computer. I hope you get that sorted out. Um, OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a folder. And this is going to be for a skin. right? Um, now the skin, I have a base, um, a base color that I painted already. So I'm not actually going to use a gradient map. I'm going to use the base color that I painted. Right? Um, and skin, I'm going to use a. Um, I usually like to use their base skin. Uh, let me hide my screen for a second. I don't want to accidentally again pull up work smart materials. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take. I could probably just take the skin that I already created, actually. 
Um, yeah, probably going to do that. And I can just show you the different node. I believe I used the skin human in substance as a base. Um, I'll drag that in as well, just to kind of like see what that looks like. Oh, that's too much. Um, skin base. Okay. Oh, it's a material. Skin. Okay, okay, I see what I did. Okay, okay, great. I'm going to show my screen again. Um, now, uh, I see uh, you can use, uh, you can try Substance Painter for free. Is it uh, a limited version or does it, it just stops working after a while, um, is how their model works. Yeah, it's, it's time limited. But all the tools are in there. Okay, so um, I'm going to get rid of this skin human simple. Um, so what I use is um, some basic skin here. I'm not doing something realistic, right? So I just use uh, one material that I just kind of use everywhere. I believe I use the chin one. No, cheek, sorry. Cheek was the one that I used as a base. I can just drag it on there. Now, okay, yeah. Um, it just requires some adjustments of settings, right? So I used this, but then I, I adjusted things, right? So um, let me just make sure that it is the same. Again, it's been a while. Um, Mavix98 is now following. Thank you for following. Because uh, I've created this node and I, I use it all the time, right? But I, I, it is, oh, I use the calf as a base. Okay. Um, but you can use any of these you want, really. But as long as you just have some sort of pore detail, you're good. Um, so yeah, you just want to play with these a little bit um, and change your skin roughness and, and all that, right? Uh, cool. I had less options. I guess on this one, um, but I ended up just changing uh, some of the other attributes. I did tile it. Yeah, I changed the scale a lot. That's what it is. I changed the scale to like one twenty eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, like I changed the scale a lot so that I get you know smaller, more reasonable pores and not giant pores. Anyway, so that's kind of the base of it, right? Um, and then I mess around with other stuff, right? Um, you know, like the height. Um, I just adjusted it a little bit to be more of what I wanted. Um, and you can just play around with different attributes on here. So if I remove this, and you can see um, the color information is from what we painted last week. Um, so if you wanted to look at that, just look at the video last week. But I can change the level of specular. Sorry, this is height. I can change the height. Right? So I can be like, oh, I want it to be like sharper or softer. Um, and how I do this is I just added the levels onto this node, right? And you just go here. Um, add uh, levels, right? and you can pick whichever one you want to affect your base color, metallic, roughness, height, etc. Um, so that's how you do that. Same with specular, right? I could tone it down a little bit. I'm, I'm under the impression that she's going to be very shiny um, because I, 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 yeah, I, my characters tend to be too shiny. So, you know, you might want to turn that stuff down. Anyway. Uh, uh, Oh, right. I was playing with this. It's like, why is it not changing? It's because I'm in the specular channel and not the roughness channel. Like an idiot. Yeah, there you go. Just soften that up a little. Yeah. There you go, right? So that looks pretty good. Um, now, for my skin setup, um, I do a number of things, and we're going to cover all of them um, in a second. So first what we're going to do is we're going to mask off only the skin because that's all we care about. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and we're going to create a black mask. Oops, right click, create black mask with color selection. All right, we're going to pick our color, this color, right? Um, and for some reason, everything is a little bit shiny. Uh, oh, because of this, right. Okay, so I'm going to just drag my base color in here, um, right? So base color there we go and we do not need this uh, and then we're just going to do skin. Boom. save 
Well, uh, it is still very shiny because this has uh, should only have color information. Right? There we go. Much better. Save that. Um, I should uh, look a bit now. Substance Painter works. Uh, I'm using. Uh, I'm just uh, so used to 3D coat. I don't know which one is best for stylized characters anymore. Yeah, you, you gotta just use what works for you, right? Anything, anything works. Um, okay, so now that we have this, we're gonna export textures. Um, export textures. No, not yet. No, yes, because I, I did mask off the, uh, the skin areas. Um, so we're good there. Let me just check my mask. Uh, this should only affect skin. It is affecting extra areas that I do not want it to affect, I can see. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and we're going to reduce the tolerance. There. Now we should be good. I tend to like to reduce the hardness too so that the edge is not ridiculously sharp. It's not going to do much. The lower you have the tolerance, the less that does, but I still do it a little bit. Um, there we go. Perfect. We're just going to export this now. Um, makeup, uh, you put in Photoshop, Photoshop, yeah. Um, the, 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 the skin I usually like to do in Photoshop because I like the brushes better and that requires a lot of painting. The rest of the body, I, I doesn't require quite as much painting, so it's, it's more, I'm more okay with it, um, in the interest of time. But anything that requires more painting, I tend to do it in Photoshop. All right, so. Now what we do is we go into uh, what was that? And now that we've exported it and we have everything connected, you'll see it automatically updates. Look at that! Our our, our changes are instantly instantly applied, um, and we can see them here. I'm, I'm seeing some some weird artifacting going on. I'm gonna have to figure out what's causing that. The key light, key light might need to be a little bit softer. There we go. Um, and then we got our fill light. Okay, so that's that's fine. Cool. Um, it sounds close to instant instant uh, to me. Uh, that you use to to what? Um, sounds close to inst insane. I don't know what that means. Um. Okay, so there we have it. Um, so that's the skin. Um, and we're going to go in and we're going to add all the uh, extra bells and whistles to this. Um, so back into uh, Substance. Um, so on top of that, um, the next thing I want to do is I want to add a emissive channel. Um, so I, or yeah, we'll, we'll say emissive. Um, emissive. Uh, and because I've added emissive to our channel, we have to make sure that our uh, gradient map does not have emissive in any of these, and it probably does have it here. Yeah, that's what I thought. Turn that off. We're good. Um, and base color, and we have... Uh, the reason I want to add emissive is because, again, like I said earlier, as I like to fake subsurface a little bit with, um, with emissiveness. Um, so to do that, um, you can see it's already kind of painted on the ears, but um, what I do here is I go in uh, and I paint where I want to have emissiveness uh, applied. So, um, ooh, let's see. Okay. Um, it's pretty funny that this actually lines up very well with what's been painted. So that means my other character lines up pretty well. Um, so what I do is for the base fill is I have my thickness map. Um, gives me a good base foundation. Uh, and then I adjust it with the levels. So um, you can see like there's there's thinness around the mouth and lips um, and a little bit around the eyelid. Right? And then we blur that out and we paint over it. Um, I usually use the black paint to kind of uh, get rid of any excess I do not want. I think that's a little bit too much. I want a little bit of subsurface around the lips area. Um, so I have one to get rid of it and then I do another one to add any additional painting that I want. 
So for instance, around the nose, I like to add a little bit of emissiveness uh, to make it a little bit more red. Um, what I meant is that because you use Photoshop to paint textures instead of a 3D program, where you actually draw on the 3D model, that to me is crazy. I lack the skill, oh. Well, the thing is like, I don't like the brushes in 3D painting software. They feel very clunky. They don't blend very well. Um, so I'd rather use a tool that is made for painting to do hand painted stuff. And then I fix up any seams in the 3D painting tool. That's just my personal taste, um, but you can do whatever works best for you, right? Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're gonna paint on the nose here. Um, just a little bit, oops. Um, so what we're going to do is we're gonna increase the size um, and also change this to white. And I'm going to reduce the flow, stroke capacity. We're just gonna paint on any additional um, kind of subsurface feeling. If you want, I'm gonna also put symmetry on. Um, if you wanted to, you could probably use this mask for your subsurface as well, if you're using actual subsurface. Um, even though I'm kind of faking it with uh, emissive. Um, I see, fair enough, yeah, yeah. Hey Miranda, welcome in, how are you doing? All right, so I wanna have a little bit more emissive on the uh, nose. I'm, I'm not sure about the ears, the ears might be bad. Um, I'm gonna add another paint just in case I decide to change my mind, um, but I'm gonna paint it out on the ears because uh, they're covered in hair. So um, it doesn't make sense for them to be emissive or have subsurface, right? Um, I guess you could have a little bit if you wanted, right? Maybe I'll put a little bit in um, on the outer edge here because also I wanna turn off back face, back face calling because I want to kind of have it applied to both ends of the ear. I might have a little bit on the inside of the ear. Probably not a good idea. Um, I mean like on a real ear, like a kind of ear like this, it would have a little bit of a membrane, but I just made it completely covered in here. Um, so it probably wouldn't look, won't look good, um, but you never know. So um, it's worth a shot. You, you want to experiment and try to figure out what works and what doesn't, right? Uh, never assume. Never assume things are, are going to be what you think. Um, so there you go. Um, also, I like to apply it a little bit on the fingers. Right? Um, this might be a little bit too much on the fingers, but I kind of like the amount that it has on there. So I'm going to leave that for now and see how it feels. Um, and we're going to go back to material mode. And we should be able to see some effects. Um, I'm not, unfortunately, so that's strange. I'm only seeing it on the ear, and I don't, I don't think I like it. <laughs> I might get rid of that. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm curious as to why I, I don't see it on the rest of the body. Um, so, let me see here. Okay, I see it on the nose a little bit. I do not see it. The ears, you probably see it so much in the ear because the ear is so dark, right? Um, yes, I do see it on the fingers a little bit. It's very, very subtle. You can see that the shadows kind of warm up a bit, right? Um, you can see there, it's very, very hard. But here you can see that the gray becomes a little bit more red, right? Um, and this is the kind of subtlety that I'm trying to get here, where I add emissiveness in order to reduce the shadows and kind of simulate subsurface. Um, again, we're going for a stylistic look, so I'm simulating subsurface as opposed to using true subsurface. Preparing whole PC for Windows reinstall uh, for my fresh start since uh, my HDD and SMD uh, space is a total mess. That's good to do. That's good to do. I gotta do uh, that for my computer as well, but I gotta, I'm thinking I'm just gonna build a whole new machine. Once I can get my hands on a, um, uh, what's it called, on a um, uh, graphics card. Hold on, I got another message.
um exact gpus are insanely priced right now definitely not a good time to buy one yeah exactly uh, i'm just hoping my computer won't die before then 150 for a perpetual license of substance uh yeah that's not bad that's pretty good actually um there's no way to even uh, get parts at this point yeah On Steam, yes. Yeah, you can get a perpetual license on Steam. You can't get it on their website anymore. Which sucks. But, you know. That's just how it is. I'm going to turn down the amount that I put on the ear. There we go. Just kind of subtle. Very, very subtle. Just a little bit of um, warmth coming through there. We'll see how we feel about it. Um, and we've added a little bit to the nose and all that stuff. But... Um, I can always bump up this, this color if I want it to be stronger. For now, though, we're going to just export this and see how we feel. All right? Go export textures. Uh, export. Okay. And again, this emissive mask you could use in the skin shader as well if you want. So if you want to use true emissiveness, what I would do is in Marmoset, you just set uh, this from Lambertian to subsurface. Um, and then in one of the subsurface slots, you would put, um, I'm just going to duplicate this material just to demonstrate. OK. Actually, instead of duplicating that one, I should just duplicate this one. Duplicate. And this one here, um, if I said if I wanted to change this to subsurface, then you could probably throw it into either the translucency or scatter map and kind of play with the settings a bit, or both. Um, and just play with the settings. And use just one channel of it as well. As opposed to using all channels, you'd probably just use the gray channel uh, because you don't need color information for those. Um, however, that's not what we're doing. We're using the emissive to simulate um, subsurface. So um, what I'm going to do is go into my textures, and we're going to take our emissive map. We're just going to drag that in and pop it there. There we go. Um, this is not very noticeable, but we can change the intensity, you see? Um, and you can see that it kind of warms up a few areas, right? So you can see it here on the fingers, right? right we can see our fingers warming up. Um, however, it's also warming up the ears and the under eyelid. It's not warming up the nose quite as much as I would like. Um, so I'm going to paint the nose in a little bit more, um, but it is getting the effect that I like. And it warms up that kind of eyelid too, which I really enjoy. Yeah. Um, the only thing to be careful of is like in different times of day, it might look like too much. Like if I turn on night, it's probably going to be too much. Uh, you know, it's actually not bad, um, but it's, it can get pretty crazy if you're not careful. The ear is too much. Um, I don't like the ear. I have, um, I'm kind of settling, setting at this point that I just I don't like the subsurface on the ear at all. I'm just going to remove it. Um, so we're going to just remove the ear uh, transmissiveness. Uh, like so. Um, but I will, I will paint the nose a little bit more. I can see that, oh, I could have sworn that, what happened? <laughs> oh, oh, it's because they're on the same layer. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Then there's no way to duplicate layers either. Uh, okay, that's fine. We'll just repaint the nose. That's why the nose isn't affecting as much oh, as I, I wanted because I painted on the same layer like an idiot. All right, there we go. There we go. We're good. Okay, save it. And now we export texture and we can preview it again. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Yeah. All right, we're gonna hop back into Marmoset and have a quick look. All right, there we go. Now it's too much, um, but uh, we get a better idea of what we want. And I can just tone this stuff down um, as much as I want, right? What I would probably, what I would do personally, is I would probably adjust the emissiveness based off the time of day in engine. Um, is how I would like to do this kind of simulated, stylized, uh, like, subsurface emissive look. Um, but you can do whatever you like. Like, during the day, I kind of like this strength. Um, but I'd probably adjust the strength based off of the time of day. 
Um, armor paint looks like uh, maybe more my speed right now, and it's only cost about twenty dollars. That's fair. Use whatever you like. Um, yeah. Ah, okay. So now we're just going to cover um, metal, cloth, and hair, um, and then we're going to call it a day. Okay. Um, so the next thing we want to do is we're going to cover, I suppose we're going to cover the cape next, um, and then we'll go from there. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that sounds good. And the rest of the stuff I'm obviously just going to do off stream, um, but it's going to be the same process on everything. I just don't want to show you the same thing over and over again, because it's not going to benefit you at all. It's only going to make it confusing. Um, so the next thing that I like to do is we're going to go back to material mode. Right. With M, if you hit M, you'll switch to material mode. If you hit C, you'll switch to all the different color map modes. Um, but M will go back to your material. Um, so the next step of my skin setup is the ambient occlusion. Um, don't mind that. <laughs> uh, hold on, I just gotta hide my screen for one second. Just gotta check something. Okay. Yeah, no, we're good. Okay. Um, all right. So this has like this has the ambient occlusion mask from l my link model because that's when I created the smart material. <laughs> um, so uh, because I'm, I'm using an ambient occlusion that isn't connected to here, same with how the cavity was, I had to put this in manually. And I used the baked ambient occlusion from earlier, right? Um, because this is going to include the hair. Now, the issue that is involved here is that if I isolate it, this is very strong. So if the hair moves, you're going to see this stuff, right? So what I like to do is I like to hop in there and um, I like to paint out, uh, paint this out a little bit. So we're going to close this and we're going to add paint. Um, and um, we're going to paint out the, uh, the ambient occlusion just around the area here because if the hair moves too much, you're going to see it, right? So I want to paint it out there. Uh, and that should be good. So just like just to kind of soften it off a little bit, right? Um, I'm also noticing that my transmissive on the ear here is is very powerful. Um, so I got to add a little bit more paint here. We kind of get rid of that. There we go. Just uh, get rid of that. Cool. All right. Um, so that is the ambient occlusion. So it adds just a little bit of shading, right? Um, Makes it feel a little bit more uh, built in, right? I might uh, reduce it a little bit on the uh, chest area here underneath the cape as well, um, because I, I don't necessarily like uh, like it there. Um, so that's good. Okay, and there we have it. So we got our ambient occlusion on all that stuff. Wonderful. Uh, next up is the uh, lips. Right. The lips are generally more specular than the rest of the, the face, right? so I like to go in here and add a little bit of a sheen. Uh, I'm going to uh, remove this mask uh, and just make it a clear black mask uh, because i got to repaint that. Okay, and um, we'll just uh, paint in the uh, lips like so. Um, I'm going to go and I'm, I start by painting it out here um, and then I go into the, the mask mode and clean up the mask. So you can see I'm adding a little bit of a highlight to the lip to kind of make it a little bit um, glossier. Right. There we go. Then I go into this mode and it actually looks pretty okay in the mask. It doesn't have to be perfect. Oops. Um, just has to be close enough. Right. Yeah, there we go. Good, 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 good. All right. Um, and there is a little bit more sheen on the lip. And if I turn that on and off, you can kind of see the difference. Um, another thing I would like to do, I believe, is go into height and kind of remove, oh, I don't know. I could remove the pores from the lip, but um, I kind of feel like in this case, it is creating this kind of grain effect on the lip as well, which I'm not against. But what you could do is um, you could go in and say like, oh, I want to uh, override the height. Um, so if I go in here and I turn height on and the height would be zero, I can go into height mode here 
and then we say replace, except, whoop, it's fine. We're good, it's fine. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> that is not the, the result I expected. Um, it's very strange. But uh, I don't think I need that group. Yeah. Okay, um, hold on. I don't know why the group is causing that problem, but I don't really need the group anyway. Uh, copy, uh, but yeah, copy mask. Right click, paste into mask. Oh, that's interesting. Why is it doing that? Huh. Oh goodness, indeed. I think it's because the skin height is messed up. Um, yeah, it's probably the height here. Yes. It is. There we go. I just gotta fix the range on the on the lips or on the skin. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so what we need to do to make sure that that is fine, and there we go. Let's play with it until it's about right. There we go. Takes a little bit of finessing. And the idea would be like just make it so that once they get it to the right point, the height generally is the same. Right. Um, and then we're going to remove mask. Yeah, I'm just going to put it back in the group. There. Cool. Gotta go have a good one. All right, that's my, hey, thanks for hanging out. And I hope you have a, a great rest of your day, my friend. Um, so there, so now, now I basically, I've, I've removed the pores from the lip area. Uh, and also realized that the pore settings were wrong. Um, we can go into height. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I guess that's, that's what it is, right? Weird. I don't know why it's uh, black like that, but you know. Um, that's fun. The idea mainly is to make it so that it has a um, kind of a mid gray overall for the height. Uh, and it seems like it's a little bit too high there. Yeah, now we have like a very subtle difference, um, but we're still getting that kind of poor detail in the normals. There. Uh, lips on and off. Perfect. All right, but we do want to fix this mask a little bit. We can see um, that it is influencing a little bit strangely here. Uh, what, what, Ike? Um, okay, and I just want to adjust the uh, the edge a little bit more. Uh, is this in, yeah, it's a bit of white. Um, Okay, and now, there we go. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, I'm gonna save that and we'll export it.
Oh, did I miss some stuff earlier? No. I just missed Cable's message saying that I was rich, and I'm not. But I'm comfortable. Um, okay. So, to turn everything back on. A lot of details, I guess. Uh, will we watch the VOD and re uh, and take notes later? Oh, you just missed some stuff? That's fair. Hey, Peter, how are you doing? Okay. Um, and then what we're going to do is go into Marmoset again, have a look. And uh, perfect. I think that looks pretty good. Um, all right, so next step on the skin is uh, uh, is our specular roughness curve. Hmm. Oh yeah, this is like adding a little bit of roughness to the curvature of the model, if I want. All right, so like making those areas feel a little bit more rough. Um, I might play with these levels a little bit. Might add a blur as well. Um, Filter, add a blur. Not too crazy, just a little bit of a subtle blur, right? Um, and we got a little bit of a paint over, but I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna go back to material. And let's just add a little bit of sheen to like the, the outer edges. And how this works is it is just a fill with the curvature in it. And I just added levels um, and I've just dialed it so that the, uh, the levels are a little bit more balanced. Uh, and not have like so basically has some black areas because by default the curvature map is all gray right so if I remove the levels it's like that I just adjust the levels until I get like a, I just the highlight areas that I like and then I added a blur on top of that very intrigued by all the creatures in Palia oh I'm, I'm glad you're gonna have to stay tuned to find out more only the future will tell all right, so vignette. Um, vignette is kind of like the ambient inclusion. Um, and uh, we can kind of paint in the, uh, just kind of like, I like to paint like a circle around the face, but it kind of gets darker as it gets further back, right? Um, again, very similar to the ambient occlusion cast by the hair. Uh, so if we go into our vignette, um, I need to, this uh, again was a mask from the Link model who had tattoos on his face. So I do not need this mask. Um, so we're going to delete mask. Here, remove, remove mask. Uh, there we go. Okay, so the vignette. Um, and I can just paint in uh, our shadows. Um, so I'm just going to hit here. And we're going to hit paint, add paint. And we're going to go in here. And we're going to sit to isolate mode again. Uh, And then I'm just going to paint in a little bit of a shadow. I'm going to turn it down a bit. It's really intense, but I'm just getting a base color um, in there, right? Uh, yeah, I, that's uh, the that's sort of I, I've been doing for my day job. I've been working on that game. Um, all right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase any excess. I'm going to turn down the intensity of this a lot. There we go. Um, we're just going to turn that up and down. So now what I do is I, I, that does is it just kind of frames the face, the kind of like a, a, a bit of a lighting, right? And I could do this in other areas too if I wanted to, but the co the cape and the shoulder pad might move around a lot, so I don't want to necessarily do that. The face, though, it really frames it, you know, um, by adding this kind of vignette circle. You can kind of see how it's playing into effect there. I think it's too strong, um, but it. It, it does add, there we go. So just like adding a little bit of shadow, you can see it also kind of inherently adds a little bit of a gradient to the ear, um, which is nice. Cool. Um, and then we have, lastly, our eye line specular. Um, so this little red part on the eye, um, I, I usually, what I do here is um, one of two things, either I up the specular or, or down it. 
if I if uh, if I wanted to paint in the eyelash on the skin, I actually use this uh, to reduce specular, um, so that I get a, a more pure color here, right, for the for the eyeshadow. And I don't remember what this is set up as. This is a higher roughness value, um, so we're gonna paint that in. Uh, add black mask. Add paint. And what I do here is I just paint in here so that it's not so shiny. Um, I'm also painting with black, I think. Uh, am I? Hold on. I don't even have a color option here. Which is weird. Um, oh, I'm in eraser mode. It's like, why is this? Why is this not working? Because <laughs> I'm erasing, I'm not painting. Okay, and there we go. So now I kind of reduce that. And that makes it so that I get this, this dark um, framing on the eye. Otherwise, the specular is going to get rid of it. Um, but what I do like to do is, um, this is, this is again an old material um, uh, that um, I like to actually add a little bit of a couple highlights here. So this is eye line dim. Uh, and then this is my eyeline specular. And what I actually like to do here is I actually like to add a little bit of roughness, or sorry, reduce the roughness in uh, a couple areas. Here, I'm gonna add a paint, um, add paint, and I like to add a little bit of, sh of sheen here, right? Um, so we're just gonna paint that in. And we're just gonna play around with our roughness value. You can see that I've, I've created this little bit of a glossy, spot here um, and I would like to make sure that it's not overdone um, so I'm going to paint in here and erase a little bit um, there we go and just erase any of this excess um, like so cool um, What an underrated feature in substance uh, that you, what's an underrated feature in substance that you find helpful? Hmm, I don't think there's anything that's underrated per se. Um, yeah, I don't think anything that I, I, I use is particularly underrated. I, I think everything that I use is, is pretty par for the course, to be honest. Um, it's pretty standard stuff. Um, it, it, there, you don't really need to use all these like fancy bells and whistles to get the results that you want. Right? So what I did here is I also added a sheen on, basically I've upped the roughness on this outer edge so that I get this kind of nice sheen on the red part. And then on the black part where I painted in the shadows, I turn the roughness down, or sorry, roughness up and then roughness down on the, on the red part so that that's shiny. And then the, uh, the, the part around the eye gets a little bit more matte so that I can kind of frame the eye how I like, right? We're gonna save that again. Um, one other thing I want to do quickly is I just want to get um, just some sort of color on the eyelashes for temporary, uh, for temporary, for now. Um, I'm actually gonna adjust the gradient overall as well to kind of be more um, in line with uh, what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna just click on this, um, get this kind of color in there. Um, and try to try to match up the uh, the colors of the hair and the ear a little bit better. Um, and this one's going to be very purple. Cool. You might up the position on the shadows a little, um, and reduce this position a little. Yeah. And then the eyelashes, I'm going to quickly just paint black. Um, add black mask. It's just, uh, I like to get something in place, even if we don't touch the uh, hair today, I just want to get something in place because it helps. Uh, it helps to sort out. Um, I'm also going to turn symmetry off because it is doing weird stuff. Um, there. And now I'm going to get, I am, I am going to get, I'm going to get, that's right. I'm going to up that roughness and then I'm going to paint, I want to get like, I still want to retain this kind of like purpley color, purpley brown. Maybe make it a little darker. Right? And I could probably go into the uh, the skin texture here and paint this a little bit better as well. I might actually just do that. 
Um, so sometimes that's another thing I, I mentioned as well, is that I'll, I'll touch up textures in Substance, but get the base paint in Photoshop because I like, I, I like the results I get better in there uh, a little better, right? So I'm going to do eyeliner. Um, and we're going to just turn that off temporarily. And I'm going to get this color, um, but darker and more purple. Um, and we're going to paint in the eyeliner area. Um, so we're going to do add black mask. And we're going to paint in uh, that color. So I actually can use a, uh, this tool here, do what it's called, the polygon fill tool. It's going to do what I need to kind of like get around the eye here, which is nice. Right? There. And I, I like to let it separate a little bit here so that it feels more like a natural eyelash. I'll just paint in a little bit here, just so that it kind of uh, tapers a little. Uh, we're going to go back into isolated mode. Uh, make sure that I'm just trying to like get painting on here, right? Um, I think I messed up my UVs a little bit because it's not letting me paint on there. Uh, oh, and I also don't have symmetry mode on. Oh well, you don't really see the other eye anyway. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into two-dimensional mode and have a closer look at uh, that area. And I'm pretty sure that I made a mistake, but not the end of the world. Um, so you're just going to hop in there. Uh, oh. Yeah, it's a little bit difficult to paint on it because the UVs are so close together. Which is unfortunate, but hey, that's okay. That happens. There we go. And what I might do as well is just uh, paint bucket fill this. Nope. A UV. There. Uh, that helps, actually. That helps. Um, because it did get rid of a little bit of that noise that I didn't like. It still has a little bit there, but I can live with it. Um, and then we're going to get rid of the isolate mode. And I'm going to darken this even more. Um, also, the eyeliner really just only needs the two things. There. Um, and we're going to darken this color quite a lot. There we go. And I do want to increase the roughness. Um, I feel like I might have broken something, but that's OK. Um, cool. All right, so now we're going to go File, Export Textures, and Export. Um, will you be doing fan art of Samsung's Samantha? I actually have no idea who that is. OK, um, so now we have a base. Um, there's some weird roughness going on here. I'm going to have to have a look at that. Um, but, um, you know, we're, we're getting there. Um, I feel like the, uh, the, uh, the skin texture didn't apply. It looks the same as before. So I'm a little concerned there. I, I don't know why that didn't update. Maybe it did, and I'm just dumb, but it looks the same. So, um, yeah. Let me just drag this back on and see what happens. Nothing. Okay. Um, let me just jump into here. Yeah, it should have worked. Yeah, I'll have to play around with those values later. But you get the idea. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to have a quick look at the, um, the hair as well. Um, OK, I also made a mistake before exporting this as well. Uh, I'll go over that really quickly in a second. Uh, so what I want to do is have a look at the hair material. And um, 
And just check out this cavity map, maybe? No, the hair is correct. Did I just apply the wrong material on the hair, maybe? Yeah, I did. Okay. There we go. Better. Okay. All fixed. We're good. All right. I should probably um, push forward a little bit more um, because uh, we're running out of time. So the next thing we want to do is um, is go over the uh, the uh, What's it called? Um, the cloth, I guess, and the metal. Um, and I'm just going to go over those pretty briefly. Because again, the process is pretty much the same all the way around. In fact, I could probably just do one of them and you'll get an idea. Actually, I'll start with the metal. And then we'll see about maybe doing the cloth as well. So the, uh, the metal, we're going to create another, uh, another mask. Um, hold on. Okay. I don't know why this is previewing the black. Oh, because I'm in the height channel, of course. Okay. So we're going to create a new layer for metal. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, we're going to duplicate this for our metal. Now, metals, I like to make a little blue. I, I, like, I like blue metals. Um, so we're going to do a black mask, and we're going to add a uh, paint uh, tool. And I'm just going to paint in the areas that have the metal. Um, and that's going to be here. Um, oops. Uh, I'm going to clear that. <laughs> Add paint. There we go. And hit that. Hit this. We're just going to make sure that we. Oh, oh I got to get rid of some issue. That. That's the issue. Okay. There we go. Perfect. Hey, Ark. How are you doing? Welcome in. Um, so this is going to be metal. This is going to be a gold, so that's going to be a different material. But I'll just do the shoulder pad um, just to give you an idea. So um, for the metal, I usually like to create a uh, more blue-ish metal. Um, so we're going to go into the blues. Um, and less saturated, of course. It's too much. Um, you know, dark blue-ish color. Um, the white, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to go a little bit blue still as well. Um, more of a neon blue in the higher, uh, lighter areas. Okay. Um, make sure that there's good amounts of contrast in uh, your metals. I, I usually really tighten these up uh, because uh, metals have a lot of a lot of contrast. Um, but don't you know? Be careful with it because you, you do you do get this little bit of noise when you add too much contrast to your bakes. Depending on how you bake your texture as well. Like you could probably I could have probably baked this at a higher um, uh, I forget the term. Like there, there was that setting when you baked it that you could uh, increase the resolution or, um, or like the the bake settings. But uh, it's okay. Uh, I'm doing uh, pixel art environment design for my game right now. Figured uh, you'd help get the creative juices flowing. Well, that's awesome. I'm I'm glad to hear it. Um, I'd actually love to see the process, and maybe once I'm done this workshop stuff, you can uh, share it with us. Anti-aliasing? No. I'll just show it. I'll just show it. So in, in here, we can go into uh, uh, Marmoset, and we can go and create a baker. Um, and it's right here. The samples. You, we could have increased the samples to something like 64 or something um, to bake a little bit nicer. There's other settings you can increase as well, right? Like in each of these, you can probably do some stuff that would increase the resolution. Yeah. But we didn't do that because uh, I didn't want to wait for the bakes. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, it's fine. Uh, we're going to, uh, again, play around with these a little bit. I'm not sure I quite like this saturation level. I'm going to decrease the saturation. Um, and this one I'm going to make a little bit purpley-ish. Right? Um, just bump up that saturation a lot. And then what we're going to do is we're going to play with the metalness values. I don't, for, uh, for the sake of um, uh, stylization, I do not make it full 100% metal. I'm going to put it something like 0.8 or something. Uh, so it's kind of like a fakey pseudo metal. Um, I am finding that this is too dark. 
um, when things get changed to metalless, uh, metallic, or when you up the metalness, they do get darker because they take the environment lighting. Um, but um, I still want to um, stay loose with it, right? So like I, I can go back and forth and I can be like, oh, I want a little bit of metalness, I want a little bit more color, I want it to be brighter, darker, whatever. Um, you're free to do all these things, right? Seven plus too much. But it is something to consider. Uh, I'm gonna up the shadows a little bit, I guess. No, 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 no. Okay, um, and then also, we gotta reduce the roughness so that it is shiny. Um, I'm gonna put it at around 0.7 or 0.8 maybe. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good, good tone. Um, and now that it's a little bit more shiny, I actually kind of want it a little darker. Um, so we're going to make it a little darker. There we go. A little less saturated. Too much. For metal, it's a little too saturated, so we just reduce it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, sure, uh, though I'm keeping it as basic as possible, but I think I found something that looks good. Yeah, that's fine. Basic is usually better. Like, less is more. Um, it's been like a year since I baked any 3D stuff, only cakes and brownies recently. Man, I wish I could uh, make my own brownies and shit. That'd be delicious. Um, you, uh, are you one of those blue metal guys? That's right. I'm more of a brownish metal guy, yeah. I like the blue metals. Um, the brown metals are nice too. It depends on what you're going for, right? Um, I usually, if I'm doing something that's more... Um, more earthy tones, then I'll do something obviously that's more of the brownie metals. And if I'm doing something that's a little bit more vibrant and saturated, um, I tend to go with the more blue metals. Um, so it's up to you. You can do whatever you like. Um, but now what we can do is we can uh, export these textures and have a look. Export. Okay. And we go back to where was that? There we go. We got a bit of uh, we have our metal in there. I think it could be a little bit uh, shinier. I think it's a little bit too matte. Um, so we'll make that adjustment. Uh, so we're gonna go back into substance. Um, and I'm going to change this to maybe like 0.6, maybe 0.5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to go File, Export Textures, and I'll export again. Um, brownish Metal, I found them hard to integrate with Fantasy stuff. Fantasy has more wood, more leather and such, so bluish tones are good for Fantasy stuff. Oh yes, it's just not all like blending together, you mean, right? I think you can do whichever for whichever um, at the end of the day. You can kind of mix it up and do whatever works best for you. Um, but great, there's our metal, and um, now what I like to do, and this is the same kind of stuff that I do on every, um, every single um, material, is I break up the colors a little bit, I add um, some ambient occlusion. So like I did with the skin, I have an ambient occlusion, right? So I'm going to take this, I'm actually just going to copy it because it's a good note and it does what I need it to. Um, so we're just going to paste that in here, and the ambient occlusion, for metal at least, um, does a number of things. One, um, it reduces the metallic value. So I make things less metallic in the shadow areas so that the shadows pop more. Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to do point, let's say like point 0.6. Um, and the roughness goes up a lot, right? Uh, to maybe like, I don't know, points, I'll say so point 0.6 as well, or point 0.7, right? Um, and I'm not seeing a huge effect on it, but you can see it here, right? You can see now it's kind of creating these shadows, um, and I can up and down the, the, the intensity of this by levels, right? Um, so we just can say like, oh, I want this to kind of spread out more, right? Um, I might even want to add in the cavity map or something. I don't need the paint. Um, and we could probably darken this a little bit as well. I might change this to a multiply. And we can update, update up the uh, color a little, maybe. Um, I'm not necessarily seeing it where I want here. So let's check the, yeah, it's not really applying here, I think. Um, what I might do is also add a cavity. So I'm going to add a cavity to this map. Oops. 
um, we're going to do add fill, right? Um, and I'm going to throw in the cavity map like so. Um, and we're going to put this here. Um, and we're going to do a multiply. Uh, yeah. And there we go. So now this is emphasizing those cracks a little bit more, yeah? Um, which is great. Look how much more that kind of pops, eh? You can see it a lot in here, and I love it. Um, so another thing I like to do is I like to add a little bit of color breakup. So color breakup, um, what I tend to do is just add a, add a noise over the surface. Uh, nothing crazy, right? So I just go in here and I say, like, I add, a, uh, I add this and I add, like, so I just added a fill layer, added a mask, um, and I add another fill to the mask, right? And what I tend to do is I take a, um, some form of noise or uh, grunge. So if I go to my grunge maps, I think my favorite was like grunge 3 or something like that. Or you can just play around with whichever ones you like. Um, Dirt Muddy might be a good one. I just I liked the shapes that I was getting out of uh, out of um, Grunge, I believe Grunge Three. And you could th you could throw in your own patterns as well, whatever you like. If you had like a specific look you were going for. Um, but let's say for the sake of argument, we use uh, Grunge Dirt Muddy, right? Um, and we can change the balance on this. I like to up for stylized stuff. I, I like to get really high on contrast. Um, or sorry, lower the balance, up contrast, um, so that we get these kind of like very distinct uh, patterns. I'm not sure I quite like this particular mask, so I might change it because it's, it's a little too busy. Let's invert it. Yeah, it's too busy. So I'm going to change it to another one. Um, oh, there it is. No, this is this one also would work, but it's not the one that I was thinking. Um, I don't know where the one I like is. Funny, like, oh, here it is. Grunge Map 4. This one's my favorite. Um, so if we balance that, um, we can um, we can change the pattern a little bit. Um, we'll hit it random a couple times and get one that we like. And that's pretty nice. Um, and what we do is we just pick a color, like something. I usually pick like a blue, green, um, maybe something like a red or green, red and green, because this has like a base color of a blue. Then you're just breaking up the, the, the base color, right? So this is going to be turned down a lot. So let's say I'm going to make something a little bit warmer, warm, warm, warmer red. Um, and we're just going to turn this to like a, I don't know, maybe a color value. Um, and we're only going to influence the color. Well, I might influence the roughness a little bit as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is go into roughness mode. And we're just going to change this to a screen. Right? Um, and then we're going to go back into here. And um, I'm going to just play around with this a little bit. And I just, I'll, I'll turn this down a little bit. It's enough so that we get a subtle variation of roughness. You can see the roughness changes a little bit. Not a ton, just a little bit. Um, we'll just turn that down a little bit more. All right. And we'll go back to our material. And in material mode, base color, um, we can reduce the amount of color that is influenced. I just want a really, really light, just really subtle variation of color, right? So we got, you can see, like, you can just barely see a little bit of red. And it's just so that it doesn't feel like this matte, solid color along the surface, right? Um, just enough to kind of break it up. And it can be any pattern you like. Uh, just, just something to break it up. And I do this on every material, right? So this could be on metals, cloths, um, you know, um, you know, bone, I guess, in the case of this horn or something. I don't do this on skin. Skin I like to keep cleaner, but uh, on any of the actual clothing articles, um, I do this. And we'll do another one. And this one's going to have probably a little bit of a green. Right? I'll, I'll add a little bit of a green. Um, and we're going to go in here, and we're going to just hit random a couple times. Just kind of, you know, get something a little different. Um, that one looks kind of nice. And then we have like a little bit of a green breakout. Um, and you can just use whatever colors you like and, and kind of get that, that, that change in surface. Um, what I might do as well is because these are both very large decals, um, I might go in and increase the balance on this one, um, but also scale it, uh, scale it up a little bit so that I get, you know, these kind of. Some are smaller noise, and then we got some bigger noise. 
Um, and it kind of adds a little bit more variety there as well. Right? Um, I think what I want to do as well is increase the, um, the, the uh, contrast and reduce the balance um, so that it's not overwhelming because I can see a lot of it. Uh, I might even reduce this to four. There. It's just, you know, very, very subtle adding that kind of breakup. And it just add, it makes that surface feel a little bit more interesting. We'll save this up now. Um, okay, great. Next step is um, we'll do the cloth real quick. And I'll, I'll quickly touch up on touch up. I'll, I'll make a, a couple of points on hair. Um, I'm probably going to have to re export the hair because I realized I made a small mistake. Um, but I will bring it up and we'll talk about it. And I'll work with what we have here and I'll explain what needs to change. Um, so we're going to export our texture. Uh, export. Okay. Okay. And um, we're going to go back into Marmoset. And there we go. So now we have a little bit of a little bit of color breakup. And you can barely see it, but it's just enough to make it feel a little bit more interesting. You don't want it to kind of pop out in your face. It's just enough so that when light hits it, it's a little bit different, right? Um, that's correct, Art. Yes. Um, okay, great. So the next thing that we're going to do is, is cover, uh, I guess we'll cover up on cloth. I mean, we could add a couple other things to the metal too if we want to add it, make it more interesting. Like we could add some little scratches and stuff, right? So um, say I want to add a, a few scratches here. Uh, we can go in here and we can say, okay, I will only affect metal roughness. Yeah, these three are probably what I need. Uh, Ruckleback is now falling. They are falling. Um, okay, so we're going to add a black mask. And uh, we're going to add a fill, add fill, and we're going to select uh, scratches. Uh, yeah. Scratch generator. This one should do the trick. Yeah. And then we can go in here and we can up the balance. Hmm. I'm not sure about this one because this one has less controls. I think the other one had more. Um, scratch rough. So we had a scratch generator and then a scratch rough. Um, I believe this one has more options. Yeah, okay. Um, scratch tiling, we increase the tiling. Um, up the contrast, because I want to make them a little bit cleaner. Um, scratch dirtiness will reduce. There we go. Um, we will uh, decrease the quantity. There's too many. Um, and we're going to reduce the size as well. Um, so the length gets reduced, the width gets reduced. Um, we're still going to reduce the quality, quantity a little bit more. There. Okay. Um, so we get a few little scratches in there. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just create a, um, I'm going to make this more metallic. Um, so the scratches tend to be a little bit more metallic, uh, they're a little bit shinier. Um, and then I'm going to actually I'm going to add some height in there as well. There's indent a little bit for these little scratches and cuts. Um, and the roughness, thinking about the roughness, but I think the roughness will stay around 0.5. Um, but then we get a little, you know, some little dings and scratches and stuff. And it adds just add a little bit of surface breakup. Um, that means. Uh, <laughs> I don't stop. <laughs> uh, all right, um, we're we're just about done here anyway. So I'm just gonna uh, quickly go over the cloth. So the cloth again, same stuff, same stuff. Um, and we're gonna go in there. Um, and I guess one other thing to mention is sometimes, yeah, I guess I'll mention one. Uh, we'll, we'll bring this up in cloth. So let's just start on the cloth. Um, but for the most part, it'll be the same thing with one difference that I'll mention. Hey, Curdle. Just woke up. Yeah, the stream, is, the stream has been good. Um, we're, we're, we're carrying on. Uh, we're almost done with the workshop stuff. Okay, so cloth. I hope you had a good sleep, by the way. Another late night, long day of streaming. Um, Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our gradient map, copy layers, um, 
Yeah, I, th I think I'm not going to get into the hair too much because I did a whole video on hair on YouTube. I'll link the hair video in the description of this VOD um, for anyone who watches the VOD later. Um, because there's no point in me covering that again because I've already covered it and it's the same stuff. And this video is already going to be incredibly long. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to paste our new layer, create a map into the cloth. Um, and the, the, this, this color is supposed to be kind of like a purple, um, so we're going to go into the uh, black mask. Um, Alright, so insert black mask, and then we're going to go add paint. Uh, and I'm actually going to say this is Kate. Mm -hmm. uh, this looks really good. Thanks, Gurdle. Um, uh, I have a, a question. Would you model the cape horizontally flat uh, so it's easier to rig? Um, I, I modeled it straight, but I wouldn't do it horizontal personally. I'd rather, because the thing is, like, if I did it straight, I'd have this big kink in it. And I mentioned this when I modeled it as well. I'd have this big kink in it. And if I tried to bend it out, I would never get rid of it. So I'd rather that it just sticks out straight from the uh, mount point. So basically it is straight, but it is on an angle that is um, you know, clean with where it connects to the body. Um, you could probably do it like straight down too, but I like to do it on, on an angle like this. Um, it just works better for me. One of my eight out of 10 mods that will never return. Uh, that's the thing about mods is the, uh, and like, yeah. I, when, when you mod someone is just, um, it's a big responsibility, right? And I think most of us, especially me, are just kind of like willy nilly just mod someone. <laughs> just like, you're a mod now. I don't know what to do with a mod. Um, I'm never assigning mods again. They're just gonna leave. <laughs> Well, the thing is, like, we're not like we're not exactly paying them, so um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I essentially, if if someone's around a lot, I'll I'll make them a mod so that they can like if I trust them and they just happen to be around, then they can help me out. And if they're not, then that's fine. Um, okay. Anyway, uh, gradient. Um, so this is supposed to be more of a purple color. Also, I should, uh, I should probably, oops. Okay. Um, I gotta hurry along because I'm running out of time here. Unfortunately. All right. Gradient. Um, this is going to be more of a blue, purple. Cape. Right. I'm going to be more precious about the colors later. Uh, make sure you hue shift as well when you're picking your colors. That's a great thing about a gradient map. That's why I like using a gradient map instead of a, you know, like a multiply color. I guess I should have said this at the beginning, <laughs> but I like to hue shift, right? And if I have the, uh, the, if I use a gradient map, I can say the dark shadows are more of a purple and the, uh, the highlights are more red or something like that, right? Or more blue, et cetera. Um, and I can change the hue of, uh, of that color, right? So I can even make this even more of a blue um, in the shadows because the main color is purple, and I can increase the highlights and all that wonderful stuff, right? You can do the, the world is our oyster, essentially, right? Um, yeah, girl's been going nuts with the uh, with those streams. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. It's madness. Um, but great, so there's our base. Um, so for cloth, I don't know, I'd probably make it like about 0.95. Very rough, but a little bit of specularness, you know, just a little bit. Um, and then what I like to do is I like to add a nice fabric pattern, right? Um, so we're gonna say I want to add a, um, a black mask, and we're going to add a fill. Um, I'm just gonna use the patterns we have here, um, but you could get a cloth pattern, uh, make a tileable alpha, and use whatever cloth pattern you want. Um, textures.com is a good place to get them. I believe it's called textures.com. Let me check. Um, uh, textures.com. Yes, textures.com is great. 
Um, it costs money, but it's free if you limit how many you, textures you download a day. Um, the Painted uh, Dragon is now following. There you're following. Um, I do it by uh, just thinking I need to be as good as one day or I'll suffer a fate worse than death. You'll get there, no problem. Um, especially at, with the amount of effort you're putting in. Uh, I think uh, painters do something similar, like they make a shadows more statue. Yes, yeah, yeah. Color, cue shifting is very common in painting, yes. Um, I missed all the uh, mods, but did uh, you hand draw the detail in Photoshop or did you bake the hide uh, to low? I did. I did bake and then I hand painted the skin texture. Um, skin and baking, that was done last week, Caitlin. Um, so if you wanted to check the VODs, um, you'll find uh, the video on that there. Um, that's my mantra too. Um, greetings, Painted Dragon. All right, so what we're going to do is we're gonna add a pattern. I'm gonna just use some of the, uh, the fabric patterns that we have here. Um, so fabric, um, but just, just for ease, right? Like you could again import other patterns and I have some that I've created from uh, textures that I got from textures.com. Um, and you can, you can just find them anywhere. You can even like take a picture of a fabric and then make it into a, a pattern. I'm gonna use weave. Weave is one of my favorites. Um, and then I'm gonna just tile that up. All right, there we go. And we'll notice that it is affecting the highlights. Um, I also wanted to scale it a little extra because it's still too much. There we go. Um, so we got this nice pattern. Um, and I'm going to invert it because I want it to affect the shadow areas of the uh, cloth. So we're going to invert it. Boom. Um, and I think it's time, maybe a little bit too much. A little less. So, okay, great. Um, and then what we're going to do is in here, we're going to say multiply. Multiply. Uh, and I want to add a, um, a little bit of a Ave A of a, um, a color to this, and I usually pick a little bit of the purple or whatever color is a base, so I, I'll make it a little bit more purple blue to match this cape, right? Um, and I have a bit of a multiply, and I can just change the amount. And the roughness, I up it. The roughness will be 100%. Um, so basically, in the shadow areas, it becomes super dark. Um, now, I do want to decrease the intensity a little bit, it's just too much. I don't want it to be noisy or anything like that. Um, another thing you can do as well is you could reduce the effect of this in the shadows. So if I was to go into add a fill and then I go into ambient occlusion, ambient occlusion. Um, so if I took this for instance, and I did set this to multiply. Now what will happen is if we go in here, um, oh that didn't work at all. Um, oh, a little bit. Um, I think what I have to do actually is reverse these normal um, multiply. How do I do this again? Overlay. That's the one. Okay. Uh, overlay. Nope. Other way. Other way. Normal overlay. Um, there and I invert this fill, right click invert, levels invert. Okay. Um, and what ends up happening is that in the sh ooh, wait, opposite. Um, yeah, I'm just confusing myself. The idea is that I make it apply less in the shadow areas. Uh, or just, I have it apply more in the highlight areas. So actually what I'm going to do is invert this like so, and then set this to maybe multiply. Or was it screen? Um, something like that. Oh, I know what I'm doing now. Okay, hold on, normal, like this. Levels off, multiply. Um, yeah, and basically by doing making it darker in these areas, it has less effect. That's right. Okay. Um, so yeah, the shadows will have a little less detail in the patterns than the highlights. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> um, great. So another fun thing 
is um, I like to add gradients to stuff, right? So I have uh, another gradient map for the gradient. <laughs> Um, and I can just add a completely different color and make it more interesting. So what I do is I add, um, I go in here and I say like, okay, what do I want the color to transition to? I can, instead of just making it darker with a multiply, I can set a specific color. So I can be like, oh, I want it to get more purple near the bottom, right? So it's even more purple uh, than the upper part and maybe even brighter as opposed to darker. Um, so I can go here, you know, adjust that color, right? And now we can see the difference here, right? So you get this kind of like lighter, more saturated color, right? Um, and I have this kind of like saturated, purpley color in the, in the lower area, right? And by doing that, I can add a black mask, um, add a, a generator, and they add a gradient, right? So do linear gradient. And we can up and down the balance of this gradient um, to change the amount of effect that we have, right? I'm not seeing anything right now for some odd reason. Um, let me go into this mode. Okay, that's why. Um, so we gotta go here, invert it, um, increase the contrast. There we go, now we're getting it. Okay, yes, perfect. And now, um, now we can see that I have in the bottom, it's a gradient, and I can make this any color I want. I have full freedom. This could be green if I wanted it to be, right? Look, look how green it is now. Now my gradient is green, um, so I can do whatever I want. Um, I'm keeping it simple in this case, um, but the options are there. Um, and it just gives you this full level of freedom in the gradient areas, which is wonderful. Um, and there you go. Right? So now, some other stuff that we might want to do is um, we can add our pattern, right? So we can add our uh, decal, whatever you want to call it, decal. Uh, we can do add black mask with color selection, and we can do that mask that we created last week. Pick the color, put it in there. Um, actually, what I could even do is use a gradient map for that too. So I can do this, duplicate it, um, and then we can put it in here, create a group, um, call it decal, and we can put this in, uh, we can copy the mask, copy mask, uh, right click, add black mask. Add black mask, and then we're going to do this, and we're going to go into paste into mask. There we go. Great. And um, what I want to do is actually uh, delete this and then duplicate this. And I'd probably do like a gradient color for this as well, um, but I can make this whatever color I want. Maybe I want it to be, it's supposed to be white, so I'm going to make it more of a white color. Um, but um, you know, maybe I want to have it a little bit more of a blue white, right? So something like that. Um, maybe a little darker, um, and then this a lot lighter, just so we get some nice contrast of lights. Um, and this will be dark. I think this will be darker, more purple, right? Um, kind of blends things together a little bit better. We'll notice our mask is very noisy, right? Um, so when you're creating a mask um, with a color selection, good to reduce the hardness, right? Um, and the more tolerance is up, the more that hardness will come into effect, right? You have to be careful, though, because if you have a lot of colors in your mask, this is going to be more limited, the tolerance. But because I only have one color, I can, I can go M on it. Um, and I can, I can also, you know, play around with the roughness. I could say, like, this is a little less rough, maybe. So maybe I'll set it to, like, 0.9. Um, maybe I wanted to have a little bit of a height or embossment to it. Maybe I would set it to 0.1. That's too much. 0.01. Just a little bit of a little emboss or something, you know, that's an option. Um, and maybe I want the pattern to apply over top of that as well. So maybe I'll put it underneath the, the pattern layer. Um, or maybe I'll have a separate pattern layer for this material specifically. There's a bunch of options. Um, they didn't teach any of this in college? They wouldn't. They wouldn't. This is all very specific, right? Everyone has their own way of working. Um, and I'm just showing you guys how I like to work. Um, now another thing I might want to do is maybe add some like weathering to this. So if I was to do that, um, I would probably use the curvature mask. Right? So I'm going to add a black mask and we're going to say like add generator. Oops, not me. Add generator. And we're going to use curvature. Right? Um, and now we can add a little bit of weathering. I'm going to make this a little bit of a purple as well. Um, I'm only going to affect the color, I think. 
We'll add a bit of a screen there. There we go. And now we're just kind of like adding this kind of uh, all to the upper edges and stuff. Add a little bit of a, a, a wash, maybe a little less saturated, you know, just mess around with it a little. Um, and you can paint some of this stuff in manually as well. And I'm going to take uh, that kind of color breakup that I made for the metal as well. I'm just going to copy it over because it's the same stuff. Um, so we're just going to paste that on there. And that adds a little bit of a breakup as well. I might um, reduce the tiling on the green because it's a little bit uh, too much. Um, because this is a, a bigger surface, I, can, I, I usually make my, my color breakup a little bit larger on a larger surface. You could add dirt and stuff too if you wanted. Like if I wanted to have specifically dirt, I could copy this. Um, and then put it in a group and then call this dirt, right? And we could add a black mask, right? And we could copy our gradient mask, right click, copy mask, uh, copy mask, and then we go right click, uh, paste into mask. Um, yeah. All right. Um, okay. And let uh, me say, oops, wrong layer. Right click. Paste into mask. I paste it into the wrong mask. There. Cool. Um, and now we have a dirt mask, um, which is needs to be adjusted, right? So let's reduce that and reduce the contrast. Uh, I realize now that this is probably all messed up as well. Um, Um, we go back to material, right? Uh, gray. Yeah, so that's a little bit more purple at the bottom. Perfect. And um, this is our dirt mask. Um, and this is also going to be set to color mode. Um, color mode. Uh, and this is, hmm. no, hold on. I'm going to set this to pass through. Oh, I'm in the wrong layer. Normal. No, no, this is fine. Weird. I don't know why it's, a, it's working differently, but <clears throat> maybe I'll reduce the opacity. Oh, it's because it's layered on top of the other one, right? So I'm going to like uh, break up this noise a little bit with the randomness. Random seed. All right. <clears throat> anyway. And this is also affected by the gradient. So it only happens in the lower parts of the object. And this is how I can add like a little bit of a bottom dirt, you know? Uh, dirt just kind of up the bottom. And because it's dirt, maybe I'll use a different color, like a kind of gray brownie color, right? You know? Really warm, dirt, dirt, dirt-ish, um, and I'm just gonna say um, maybe overlay. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I'm not getting maybe I'm not necessarily getting the color I want with this blending mode. So maybe I want to set this to normal. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know, something like that. And just like add a little bit of a ground dirt, you know, grimy dirt color. And there you go. Cool. Um, and that's it. That's it for the cloth, right? So same kind of stuff. Um, great. Thanks, Ark. I'll have a look at that in just a second. We're just about done here. All right. And then we're going to export textures. Um, export it. Would you ever do a rigging tutorial? I'm considering it. Uh, we'll talk about that after I'm done uh, with the screen. Um, well, I, not, I'm considering it. It's, it's part of the plan, but um, based on the responses of this, I have to see what, uh, what I'm going to do. Because um, I don't think there's a huge interest there. Um, okay, so we're going back to Marmoset, and this will load up our cape, and there we go. Um, thanks to the bits, Curdle. <laughs> Thank you for teaching. I'm 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 happy to. Um, another thing I like to do is add a um, a turntable in here. So we're just going to throw that into the turntable, and that way I can just scroll the timeline and just rotate around the model. And this is because I have lights like this really strong backlight. So if I try to rotate it, it wouldn't preview very well. But here I can kind of just see what it looks like when I rotate with the lighting conditions. Um, there you go. So that's essentially it. Now again, I have a whole video on hair, so I'm not going to cover hair specifically. But I did want to bring up one thing. Um, so in Maya, before I exported, and this is something that I should have done and I forgot, is um, I like to actually go into the hair and I like to pull these ends out. Um, so I like to take this and I just yank 
this edge out like this. And just make, because they're all dulled out, right? Um, and that bakes better, but I like to have this pulled out after I've baked it um, because I like to feather off the ends with a mask. Um, so in, in substance, what I would do in the hair, right, is I would add an opacity channel, right? So we're gonna add an opacity channel. So, um, and you'll see it gets all weird because of this. And I'll just get rid of opacity on that. And we're gonna have a base fill on the opacity of white. Opacity is full white. And then here, this is gonna be opacity of zero. Uh, oh, sorry, new layer, new fill. Um, and this is only gonna affect the opacity. And we're gonna turn that down, right? Um, and we're gonna add a black mask, right? And what I do here is I just, it's very simple. I just go in and I go right click uh, paint, right? And I just paint out, uh, I just paint out a little bit of a mask, right? Oops, wrong tool. Regular brush, regular brush. And I just go in and I just go in and I start painting out these edges. Uh, I think I need to increase the intensity of this a little bit. Um, stroke opacity, yeah. Okay. And we're just gonna paint that out. And then we can add this kind of nice little, nice little feathering to the tip, so it feels more like natural hair. Um, or, well, obviously it's stylized, but it feels more like hair because the tips kind of split, flare out a little bit, right? Instead of just like ending in nubs. Um, and this is why I like to pull out that piece of the geometry because you can see like it kind of like curls in on itself at the bottom. But I would like it to flare out into a like, into a tip, right? So if I pulled out the mesh a little bit, that would be nicer. Um, and that's it. And that's it. And I would export this again. So we'll just export textures. Uh, export. And we'll just go into to Marmoset. So this is the only thing that's different from the video tutorial on on hair, because I don't believe I alphaed out the the hair in that video, if I remember correctly. Um, so what I would do here is go into transparency um, and add a dither, right? And there it is. Um, and because of my export settings, the alphas are included in the albedo, albedo color mask map. Um, so that's why the the, uh, the transparency automatically got it because it's using the uh, alpha of the albedo, um, and that's it. That's it. Um, so guys, that is uh, that's about it for our tutorial, um, tutorial workshop, I should say. Um, so we've covered everything. Um, so like I was saying, um, next uh, next steps for this. Now I'm contemplating whether or not I want to do a video on rigging. That won't happen for a while because I have to finish this model and I'm going to finish it off stream because I've covered everything. There's nothing new for me to show you. Um, I mean, I could look at leather, for example. Leather would just be the same kind of stuff with different material properties. So maybe a little bit less roughness. Um, obviously not metal, but it would be a little bit shinier than cloth, right? So same kind of stuff, but like, um, like cloth, um, it has all the same stuff, right? So um, any material has the same, like any material that I create at least, has the same uh, components, right? Um, it has um, it has your your base color, um, some sort of gradient color, um, and then you have you know a decal or pattern, perhaps color breakup, um, maybe some sort of wear or dirt, um, and um, and then also that kind of highlight um, that I created that I think I accidentally deleted. Um, I don't know where it is. Oh, here it is. It's outside the group. Idiot. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, um, ooh. okay, no, uh, oh, no, no, I'm just, <laughs> I'm done, here it is, so it's there, um, and then here is our, uh, our highlights, yes, yeah, yeah, there it is, okay, so this is our, our, um, uh, weathering, right, um, and then our, um, what is this? Oh, pattern or, or noise. Yeah, so it'll have some form of noise, maybe some weathering, you know, maybe some dirt color breakup, uh, decal patterns. It's all the same stuff. Jamie does things. Thank you for following. I had no idea I wasn't following you. You're good. Um, but anyway, so we've covered it. We've done it. Um, so now I will, I'll end the video. So anyone who's watching the VOD, I hope um, I hope you got something out of this. We may continue. We may not. Um, based off of responses, like I don't think it's worth 
doing a rigging and animation and all that because I don't think the interest is there. Um, there's definitely a lot of people out there who uh, focus on animation and whatnot. We'll see. Um, but either way, there will be a um, there will be a break for a little while while I finish up this model. Um, probably a couple weeks. So next week we're not going to be doing a workshop. It'll just be a regular setup. Um, maybe we'll work on this, but it won't be a recorded video. Um, and, um, and then after that, we'll see. Maybe we'll do some rigging. Um, I've already covered lighting. Um, so all that stuff that we covered today with lighting, that's the same stuff I'll do on the final. Um, I'll use that same light rig on the final model on when it's posed and all that. Um, and um, yeah, so you should, as, as an artist, you should have everything you need right now. Um, you could pose it however you want. Um, you could pose it just by, you know, moving the model around or something like that, right? But we've covered the whole process um, of actually creating the asset. Um, and we'll see, uh, I'll see about doing maybe a, maybe a rigging video. Um, we'll see. But uh, for now, um, I, hope, uh, um, I hope you all enjoyed. Um, so I'll stop, uh, I'll stop the recording now.